It's good people. It's Thursday, Hotep Thursday. Back at it again. Best podcast in the land where when a ship hits a fucking bridge, <laughs> niggas get the blame for it. DEI gets the blame for it. I'm Uncle Hotep. He is Hotep Jesus. What's good with you, man? What's good with you, y'all? Uh <laughs> I got a story, but I I don't know if I was going to wait until pe- more people get in. Let me get it off real quick, so because it's kind of crazy. Listen. It's a throwback, or this is happened what? recently? What's that? This story you're talking about. Oh, it was this week. Oh, this just happened? Yeah. Okay. You know, you listen. I'm old head, you know what I mean? You old head, you you supposed to get you know certain things checked when you when you get certain ages and shit right. Yeah. So, mom was mom was getting on me. Hi, mom. Right, mom's been getting on me. Like, you gotta get your colonoscopy done. You gotta get your colonoscopy done. And I was like, all right. I asked my doctor like last year. He's like, nah, don't worry about. It. Wait till next year. So, you know, like all right. Uh huh. Anyway. My boy Ricardo died. You know, my boy Ricardo died. He he a little bit older than me. He could die. Uh, this is rest in peace, Ricardo. So you know how you know how it is when niggas you know your age die. You niggas start getting getting right and shit. Oh, I gotta go to the doctor. You know what I mean? I gotta yeah. get right. You know what I mean? Start eating better and shit. <laughs> so I scheduled a colonoscopy, right? Okay. It was like a, like a month away, and it was just happened this week, right? Okay. Man, they give you this long ass list of shit to do. We just went to New York. And we'll get back. You ain't supposed to eat the day before. I already ate some Chick-fil-A. I don't know what the fuck going on, right? <laughs> so on the way home. So I start fasting, right? Then they give you this fucking Miralax shit. The okay. drink. So I drink the Miralax and shit. Like you gotta drink all this water, all this Miralax. You gotta break it into like 60 ounces each way. I drink it, right? Uh-huh. I, f- I look at the list I was supposed to have, right? And I, I forgot. It says gas X. And I look, and I bought some fucking suppositories. I'm like, what the fuck? I got the wrong shit. So anyway, I had drunk the Miralax like an hour before that, before I realized I got to go get the gas X. <laughs> I went to Walgreens, got the gas X. Then now all that shit started hitting me, man. I got, I was in the, I got in the ride. I'm like, my stomach started bubbling and shit. Uh, <laughs> I was like, like, and now the Walgreens ain't too, too far from me. So I was like, it's only like five minute drive. I start driving. It start getting worse and worse, man. <laughs> I hit the corner. I start driving like this. You don't even get the shits oh. real bad. <laughs> You're in the car. Right? I 
I was like, where I like this, like, oh, shit. <laughs> About to get a I'm catch a cramp in your ass cheek, balls. I'm trying to make it home, right? <laughs> oh boy. Car come. Car come down. He's make they make a left. I gotta make the right. I damn near hit the car. <laughs> <laughs> I know she was like, what the fuck is this, right? So I make it. I'm start trying to gingerly get out the car. Here it comes. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I was like, oh shit. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm in my driveway, right? <laughs> so I fucking, I was like, man, I gotta run it. I gotta make it in house. Making it in house. It wasn't too bad, right? <laughs> but do you made it? <laughs> right, or some, yeah. some I know some of that shit slipped out before you got there. Nigga. <laughs> so, I, One of your drawers is underwear is away, man. Right <laughs> uh, oh, you throw underwear away. Away. Okay, get on the toilet, man. As soon as like bend over, <laughs> explosion. <laughs> no ditty. As soon as I bend over, explosion. I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> I look up, man. I must have shot all of my... <laughs> they blew the whole the bathroom up. And shit on the mirror. And shit on the tub. <laughs> and shit on the door handle. <laughs> Yo, I swear to God, right? <laughs> and shit on the toothbrushes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I didn't know. Nobody told me this. I meant to ask a time. Like, Yo, what's someone calling out to me, man? Nobody told me all this prep work is the worst part of it, man. Mm. Like man, I was I was hurting for fucking at least a good six hours on the toilet. Mm. You were sitting on the and, toilet for six hours? No, I mean, like I had to keep oh, like go, back I had and to go to the toilet. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was a fucking blowout. Pause. <laughs> Uncle shit. <Right>? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but then I go to get the colonoscopy. It was like, hey man, you just going. You go to sleep, you'll take a nap, you'll be right up, it'll be over. He's that doctor came in, it was like, Yeah, hey, you, you got through the worst part. I'm like, <laughs> right? <laughs> the prep is the worst part. And now I, I went to sleep, woke up, it was like, Yo, you're done. You, they didn't find nothing, man. I'm like, See you in 10 years. I'm like, Oh, well, thanks, man. I was like, Because I'm not doing that shit again. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Jesus. Damn. Yeah, so that was my week. Okay. But I'm glad I got it done. So my mom can't bother me no more about it, anything like that. I need somebody to animate that story. We got this nigga running stop signs, <laughs> <laughs> hitting park cars, trying to get home. <laughs> then you see the bathroom with shit everywhere. <laughs> Y'all gotta uh, animate that. Somebody uh, gotta animate this. Oh man. Yeah, but I, I feel like we have thanks everybody coming through. 195, 194 on YouTube. Um let me get the rumble. Let me bring Rumble up. Shout out to everybody that came through. I'm uh, trying to find a, a South Park episode right now that sounds like that story. Oh man, come on. I knew it was play, one. Why don't you play the trailer for the people, man? The um, Grifty's trailer? Yeah. They haven't seen it all week. I'll play it again. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Let me... I gotta... I gotta bring this up real fast. What's that? South Park? No. There you go, y'all. <laughs> I knew it was a South Park episode for this exact story. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's Uncle Hotep after you got to the bathroom. All right, let's play the um, let's play the uh, trailer. Hold on, uh, minute forty-seven seconds. Welcome to the fourth annual Grifties and the first ever live Grifty Awards. And now for your hosts, Uncle Hotep and Hotep Jesus. Yo, no George, but I can't even breathe in this joint. <laughs> That's fucked up. He working on that Coon of the Year award. Black people, am I right? We've got some great categories tonight. 
including athletes. We'll say what's up to your dad. Seasons COVID-19. Who did, y'all, who did you want? Hamlin? Hamlin's a sleeper. Hamlin's a sleeper. <laughs> Female, musical, celebrity, people's political grifty, the Hall of Fame, and a surprise category. Y'all see we professional, we got the teleprompter and shit. And of course, the one everyone is waiting for, Grifter of the Year Award. From podcasts to movies. DJ Protocol. Yeah, DJ, that's the time to do it. Uh, This is not a grift. I really think Little Nas X is a gay demon. How dare you? Unlike most modern award shows, none of these women have penises. Women shouldn't speak anyways. Y'all pick the blackest room for a black... Paint the walls white so I can see y'all next time. All coons look alike to me. Some of you white people too. Some of y'all look like you came from Eight Mile. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're halfway through, no one's been shot yet. But I'm gonna say at the Grifty Awards, there's only one person more arrogant, more self-assured than me, and that's Hotep Jesus. Grifter of the year. Uh, Clap it off for old Uncle Hotep. Hopefully my kids will watch this and be inspired and stuff like that. Fuck them kids. I'm looking for my wallet. I'm like, oh, thank God he didn't take it. Thank God. There it is. Grifties. Grifties up now. Patreon.com slash hotel has been told you. Five bucks. You get access to that. Plus, you know, something like 200 episodes of hotel has been told you 2.0. If you love this show, we have a Monday night show on Patreon that we do privately for VIPs. Five bucks. You get access to all the episodes including the grifties. Also, there's a couple of classic interviews up there. So go check it out. It's worth your money. <clears throat> That's all I can say about that. But I uh, appreciate all the Patreon supporters that have been supporting this whole time. Yeah. Um, now, now, real quick, I got my own shitty story. And, you know, just to be fair, I can't have Unk go out and be the only nigga with a shitty story. I'll, 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 uh, I'll dive in there with him, pause. So this goes back to um, my days in Boy Scouts. I'll never forget this day, man. The night before I had some uh, Domino's pepperoni pizza. Okay. So the next day, um, we had a, um, a, a Boy Scout trip. We were supposed to go in the woods and fucking make fire or some shit, some merit bad shit. I forget what. So uh, one of the other parents picked me up. So I'm riding with them. It's us and like, you know, uh, like three boys in the car and an adult, right? And we riding, we riding, we riding, riding, riding. And I'm, I feel the bubble in my stomach. I said, oh, <laughs> that don't feel right. And I felt another one. So I said, hey, um, you know, Mr. Such and Such, I got to go to the bathroom, man. We got to pull over. Nah, you'll be all right. You'll make it. <laughs> I was like, I don't think I'm going to make it. Nah, you'll be all right. You'll make it. Just hold it. We almost there. All right. So I'm holding it. I'm holding it. And I said to him, I said, listen, I really got to go. You got to put over. I got to use the bathroom. We almost there. We almost there. Nigga. I held on as long as I could until (laughs) no longer. All of a sudden, you hear in the car, oh, my God, we can smell it. <laughs> <laughs> Windows is down now. Now this nigga won't pull over. Oh, now yeah. you won't pull over. <laughs> now, now, all of a sudden, you want your ass want to pull over. They pulled over to the gas station. That gas station looked like hell. That gas station bathroom looked like hell when I left it. I had to wipe my ass. With my dirty drawers, I had to wipe my, my, my the shit off my leg with my socks. I went to the Boy Scout camp with a big ass shit stain running down my motherfucking inside of my. They talking about, don't worry, it'll dry up before we get. <laughs> <laughs> the whole trip, I got a shitty ass stain in my leg with no socks on on a Boy Scout trip. Wow, that's foul. That's so fucked up. That's All you had to do is pull over, yo. He had one job. Oh man. Everybody's Um, got one. Everybody's got one of those stories. 
Uh, Clee Cooper, thank you for the cash app donation. Word, appreciate you. Um, let's get to it because I think we got a lot of shit tonight. Pause. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> we definitely got a lot of shit tonight. <laughs> they got a lot of shit tonight. <laughs> no pun intended. Anyway, for uh, thanks to Nerd Nash. Appreciate Nerd Nash. Uh, uh, Black Twitter report sponsored by NerdNash.com. Ice Cube. As once I, I see you eating some fried chicken, huh? You eating some fried chicken, man? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a food question. We'll ask in a little bit. Ice Cube, what you know? He's the owner of the Big Three. He runs a three-on-three basketball, uh, you know, uh, league during the NBA summer, I think, off season. He's offering Caitlin Clark five million to come play for the Big Three. Mm. Now, Nerd says new blacks of black Twitter continue the Caitlyn hate asking why Cube didn't offer Angel Reese a deal. Mm. <laughs> Lexi Brown was on Gilbert Arena show sneak dissing. I don't know who Lexi Brown is. I guess she's a former player. The second black woman to throw shots at Caitlyn Clark. What is up with the Caitlyn Clark hate? Um, Is that the one that was doing the... um? No, Angel Reese is the one that did that. But I thought she did it to Caitlyn. Yeah, she did it to Kayla. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So they're like rivals. I mean, yeah, I, I guess. Like, not really, but they're like, like LSU won last year, you know, and, uh, you know, they beat Iowa. Well, to uh, the eyes of the people there. Yeah. Right. Um. So they mad at, they ain't pick a black girl. Is that DEI? <laughs> or is Caitlin Clark get DEI? <laughs> I think sports is the one place uh that, you know, there is no like inclusivity. You know what I mean? You get you you whoever's the best to get on the court. You know what I mean? I I I, I assume, you know what I mean? Some some people have said the NBA might have like a token roster spot for a few white players, you know what I mean, to get on the get on the get on the court to help sell tickets. I don't know. I think this is hate from some of these women are hating on Caitlin Clark because I guess they feel like they never got to shine. Caitlin Clark is getting. But to be honest, we never seen. I don't think we've seen a basketball player with the skill set, a woman's basketball player, the skill set of her. So skill now they're men. Caitlin? Caitlin Clark, yeah. Okay. That's that's as far as I can see it is is hate. I don't you know. know it seemed to be a good argument. What? They definitely should have picked Angel Reese. But there might be a reason what? why. What? Hey, oh, 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 oh. You're not a connoisseur of shine basketball. Let me tell you something about Angel Reese. She can't fucking play. She can't fucking play at all. She gonna go to NBA and get her shit smacked. I'm telling you that right now. She can't play. Really? <laughs> I swear to God. I swear. I swear. Chat, that's true. She can't play. Listen, she don't got no fucking dribble. She can't shoot no three. She can't do nothing. She blocked some shots. She ain't gonna make it long in the WNBA, man. No. No. Why she be winning all the time? Because they had a a, a, a a stacked squad at LSU, man. Oh, yeah, that's true. No oh, man, like Clay, Caitlin Clark can play, man. She can shoot, man. That's that's the thing. Like I don't think we've ever seen a, a woman player shoot like this. All right, dropping thirty a night. Yeah, she. It do say she's dropping thirty here. I'm looking at the stats right now. Matter of fact, let me bring up on the screen so I can show you guys what I, exactly it is I'm looking at here. So we're looking at 32, 35, 27, 8, 8, right? Okay. So we got some, like you said, some 30 point games from Caitlin. We got some decent stats from Angel. She's dropping 30s too. She's dropping 30s too. Angel is, let's get, this is what I really wanted to come from. I wanted to look at, I wanted to size them up. Angel Reese is 6'3", 165 pounds. Caitlin is listed as, Six foot and 155 pounds. So 
Angel got her beat by height. So she's a little bit bigger. She's going to be able to hang with the boys a little bit more. But if what you're saying is correct, then um, maybe Caitlyn can actually ball. And that's why he's like, yo, I like your game. You should come, you know, be our DEI pick, right? <laughs> why is it? Oh, well, come on, man. Because <laughs> this, is, this, is, this, is, this is, let's call it speed of speed. What the fuck is women doing compete with men, right? Other than Cube trying to sell tickets, right? He's grifting. This is that for real, for real. That's is yeah. This is the total grift. But I mean, he's trying to he trying to sell his league. You know what I mean? Well, I I I have no problem with that. I have no problem with that. I know he's grifting. You know, this this is him being a businessman. He's like, yo, I sell big three. I get to make the rules. I sell tickets. You buy the tickets. I make money. We got advertisers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, sponsors. Boom, boom, boom. I make more money. He got to fill seats. And if Caitlin Clark is gonna fill seats, then so be it. Um, but I have a tip for a Kofi take on what? So take this with a grain of salt. You know what this could be? This what? could be an introduction to trans women and women's basketball. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I mean, we're we're starting to compete across genders now. This would be a first for professional sports if we're considering the big three professional sports. This would be a first where we're having a co-ed. So this could be, you know, they walk, they don't run when they try to push these things. This could be somebody like, yo, let's get her to start to normalize seeing men and women compete together. The next step is Joanna man. That's my ten for a Kofi take. I don't know. You don't think that's plausible? Um, I, I, if we ever get to that point, I, it's over anyway. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, like, I mean, if society ever gets to that point, it's over. You know what I mean? But I, I guess we're getting. I don't know. I I just feel. This could be that bridge. No pun intended. Anyway, she if she can play in a big three, then niggas gonna punch your shit anyway. So I mean, it's, <laughs> it's total grip by a fucking creep cube. Like, come the hell on, man. And but why niggas get mad about this shit? Like, yo, y'all should be like, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Stop asking Reese, Angel Reese to go in there. Angel Reese will get her shit swatted. Yeah, Angel Reese will get her shit punched. Like niggas knowing how to fucking play the play the role. Like y'all should be like, yeah, Kayla, go ahead and go out there. She go out there and fucking they throw her shit all across the fucking screen and shit. Mm -hmm. Averaging two points a game. Niggas can't think, man. Niggas simple, man. Niggas is simple as shit. Cube can see it. <laughs> niggas see can't grip see. clearly. He got twenty twenty vision for the grip. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, Cube know what he doing? Oh, anyway. Whitney Griner, yeah, yeah, yeah. She wanted to play. I mean, they would have threw her shit too. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, uh, next up, uh, Savannah James. Is she trans? You know? I, I don't know. Who? Brittany? Brittany? Griner? Yeah. Oh, you sure? No, oh, she just cut her breasts off, man. I don't know that motherfucker voice deep as shit. She sound like a New York rapper. I don't need to stop, man. <laughs> what does that got to do with anything, man? She's a woman. Is she, she on, um, is she on uh, testosterone replacement therapy or something? That I don't know. I don't know if she's on the juice or on the needle or anything like that, but she's just, I don't know, a big woman that cut her breast off. <laughs> what do you want me to say? That bitch was out there talking about, hey, ladies, I'm glad to be here competing with you. I'm like, what the but well, you ex what you expect her voice to uh, a woman that tall? You expect her to have a look a squeaky voice, man? She gonna have a deep ass voice. You don't know why she grew that big? Like in, in Middle Earth, when they had giants and giantesses walking the earth, you think a giant like a six eleven giant woman was like, 
Ho, ho, Tip Jesus, how are you? Oh, and how do you think she's going to talk? It ain't going to sound like Blade. She's going to sound just like Brittany Griner. Look, nigga, get off the block. <laughs> Cut your head off. You know? <laughs> Brittany Griner sound like Batman. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, and another thing, Commissioner Gordon, <laughs> Commissioner Gordon, <laughs> you don't even know if that's her real voice. That remember there was a you ever see this video? It was about Spike Lee. He was talking about Michael Jackson, and he said, uh, "This is the uh, that video. They don't care, really care about us." The, yeah. Um, yeah, it was getting food. Spike was getting food. Right, he is back to Mike. All of a sudden, here is. It was Spike. They got any food left. He turned around. It was Michael Jackson. Mike, when he got in public, he talked like, hi, how do you know that? He, that's how he talked. But when he talked regular, his voice was deep as shit. Nah, Mike's voice was just sore from singing. No, no, I'm telling you. You got to find... Chat, anybody seen that video? I know he, what video he, talking Mike's about. real voice was deep as shit. I know but what he practiced about. talking like that. He was in character, I guess. Ain't no way Mike that voice that deep when I mean, he was hitting them notes. He had a range, man. Pause. No diddy. He had the range. You know what I mean? Don't you don't got no cousin? I got a cousin, man. Anytime white folks come around, he get he put his white voice on. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The, you you the, don't got the, any cousins the, like that? The bass just leave his voice. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have any cousins like that. I got a cousin like that. No, every time wife, I'm the. I'm sure I, I don't know how to do somewhere this. doing that dumb shit. <laughs> I I don't I can't do it. Like I just I just talk normal. You know what I mean? Like I might like try to fucking speak proper English or something like that. But I'm my my I sound the same. You better straighten up when massa come around. <laughs> better not be talking that job. <laughs> <laughs> So some people are like that, man. Um, yeah, Hotel Perubo, my MJ had a deep IRL voice. All right. Allegedly. <laughs> no, I'm telling you. Anyway, um, Savannah James, wife of LeBron James. <laughs> She's stepping up the podcast, man. She has a new podcast. First episode drops tomorrow. Can can we play the trailer, man? Uh, I haven't seen it. Let's play it. You Let's got it. Hold on, hold on, hold it's on. The, it's in the report. It's in the report. Pull it up and let me know you're ready. I don't like this one bit. Uh, all right. All right. Yeah. Go. Go ahead. All right. Three, two, one. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to send the next caller through to you guys. Wait a minute. Don't we have to say something? Like, we'll do that afterwards. This is just Justin oh, testing. Oh, okay. Got it. This is Justin. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Where are you from? And what's your crazy? This might be all right. They're doing calls. That might be all right. We about to see. We about to see. Is this see, when you have calls, it's not going to be 100% your takes, and you can just grift off the caller's takes. Correct. So you ain't, like, that gives you less opportunity to sound fucking stupid with some stupid, your stupid lame brain idea in your fucking head. That's true. You know what I mean? If it's call, call-in show, that shit, that'd be all right. Um, You're right. You're right. That's how it's supposed to go, but I'm against women having podcasts. Especially married what? women. Married women shouldn't have podcasts. <laughs> um, women should be uh seen, not heard. Oh <laughs> where do you get this fucking bit from? <laughs> See LeBron James' wife. Who needs to hear from her? If she don't go full pick me, I'm not for this podcast. She got to go full pick me on this podcast. I need her to restore the feeling. She got to go full pick me, full hotep, 
full. I take care of my man. I cook. I clean. Nuclear family. That's what I want to hear. But all this shit about my wife got a podcast is bad news. Nobody's wife should have a podcast. That should be against the law. Women shouldn't have podcasts. It's bad enough you got women with business podcasts and shit. You never give a woman a microphone. They're loud enough as it is. Jesus Christ. You let women start talking, the shit just gets fucked up, man. If women want to have a voice, they just got to write it down on a piece of paper and pass it to us, and we'll talk about it on the podcast. Oh, all right. Enough, enough, man. (laughs) Chat, you see how he is, man. He goes fucking crazy. You know which women would be good on podcast is the crime joints. Crime, you know, true crime. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Yep, we could do that. We could do that. Outside of that, women can't be trusted with a microphone. I'll lie, I'll lie, I'll I'll make exceptions because they love that true crime shit in them shows and because women are like secretly serial killers inside. That's why they like them shows. They fucking crazy. <laughs> inside of every woman is a serial killer. Um, they all got that evil streak and they be trying to you know watch all these shows about serial killers. Like, what's wrong with you? You have a sickness, you know. All women like that shit. Um, but that all right, that's one exception. What other exception do you got? Cooking. Cooking? Yeah. Okay. Allow. I'll allow it. Yeah. How to cook, bitch. Yeah. No, I'm not saying. Cook. There's some. Like on TikTok, there's that one. There's like one skinny white girl that just be cooking shit. She ended up having a brother as a, a fiance. Niggas went crazy. <laughs> um. But both men and women are good at, at, at like cooking like things, um, right. shows, whatever. Um, cooking, true crime. I don't want to hear your sports opinion. I don't want to hear your business opinion. What else? You? I'm not gonna hold you. There's there's not that many sports out like female sports takes out. I'd like. No, I'm not. John, I mean, make a fence. Yeah. Um, I can't. I can't name any. Um, child rearing. They could do a podcast on child rearing. How to raise your picnic. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like, they can't do a I mommy think cast. You went wrong on that, did it? This works. <laughs> a lot could go wrong on a mommy cast. <laughs> 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 You're right. I take that back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nope. I don't know. Uh, nope. Gossip. Gossip. They're not good at gossip blogs? See, that, there you go. You done fucked up right there. No gossip. We, that's the last thing. The black community has had... I'm, I'm sick and tired of the fucking gossip cast in the black community. That's the last thing we need. Is another no, we gossip. don't need any more. But are they good at it? That's why we don't need no more, because they too fucking good at this shit. Them niggas would do three hours and you'd be sitting there with popcorn watching all three hours. Caught up or caught up in some celebrity bullshit. Yeah, they good at it. That don't mean they should do it. Yeah. You know? Um Black Twitter's waiting for her to say something they don't agree with so they can eat her up. That's what the nurse says. He said what? He said, Black Twitter's waiting for her to say something they don't agree with so they can eat her up. This is what I'm saying. It don't take much. If I was LeBron, I'd have told her no. No, you don't need a fucking podcast. You need somebody to talk to, talk to me. I get you a therapist or some shit. No. This is a oh, bad idea. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to play devil's advocate here. What if she's the brains of the family? She probably is. I think she is. LeBron, no reading ass, definitely ain't. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga ain't finished the book since the first grade. <laughs> Mr. Page one. So, I don't know. She might be the smart one. Um, she probably is. That don't mean she need a microphone. If she was smart, she shut the fuck up. You know what it is. And this is Negro's downfall. 
Niggas love the limelight. Correct. Correct. It's a disease in Negroes, man. How much you need? What it is. <laughs> you got arguably the greatest basketball player of all time, and you still need more motherfucking Sean. I mean, but his career is about to be over. What is she going to do with her life? Same thing she's been doing. No, man. No, she loved the them niggas loved the limelight. She ain't gonna be the going to the games anymore. You know what I mean? Both her sons or one son don't look like he's gonna play in the NBA for long. Oh, Bronny about the other one. Bronny about to be in the league. He gonna be in the league for a hot five years and be going. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? It might take him five years to get to the league. What are you, you talking about? I'm not trying to be funny, but like he got a long way to go. And what about the other one coming up? I mean, he's got the size, no diddy, but like <laughs> we, we got to see him play against, you know, next year against quality opponents. You know what she I'm saying? Got at least 10 years of NBA tickets coming, coming our way. Oh, man. He got five from Bronny, another five from Bryce. That's a decade worth of limelight. Listen, no, listen. Niggas, Remember you said Sean Coach and niggas just got to just be seen. This is Sean Coach. It's, 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 listen, you can't talk. I don't know if we can talk about it legend, like literally like authoritatively because it must be a different type of attention type charm. Because what Wade do? Wade going to retire. What he do with his son? I mean, his daughter. His daughter. <laughs> what kept him in the limelight? He sacrificed one of his kids. Allegedly. Allegedly. Niggas will go to a great lengths to be in the limelight. I don't want to just give me the cash, but some people, when they get that limelight, or, or Savannah might know what's coming down, man. What Boy, LeBron mean? was partying with Diddy. She might be like, hey, hey, I got to get my shit right, man. They might take this nigga away. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk about that later. Wait, what? She, what might happen? She preparing herself. For what? Listen, if they could take Diddy down, you don't think they could take LeBron down? So this is her backup plan? Yes. In case LeBron got some skeletons in his closet. Bingo. Try to take the empire down. She's like, aha, I got this podcast, nigga. Yes. This red table talk all over again. No, I'm telling you, man. That that, that I'm telling you, that, that that might be it. That what else? What other reason is she going out there? Because she's bored. She got nothing else to do. She need a backup plan. Now listen, <clears throat> as much as you say about when women are smart, man, they'll they'll get a backup plan. This is a bad They plan. always have a backup plan. This is a bad idea. It might be a backup plan, but it's a bad idea. You never allow three women in a room together alone, unsupervised. They're like children. <laughs> they can't be trusted. They need a chaperone. There's no man on that podcast, so that means it's going to be reckless. Yeah, but there might be men calling in. That's even worse. <laughs> Yo, uh, he also wants to add, what, what's happening to the podcast game? Should regular people let celebs have the podcasting game and move on to the next thing? Ooh. Ooh, that's a good question. Here's the thing. Celebs are fucking stupid, so no, you don't have to let them have a the game because a lot of them are getting viewership, but they're only getting viewership because they're famous, right? And if your content... People, people have choices, so if your content's shitty, they're going to where the good content is. They don't go fuck who you are. And they're going to where the great content is. And the great content is going to create conversation. And that's really what it comes down to, right? This is a water cooler conversation at work. Hey, did you catch that podcast? Da, 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 right? Um, it's small talk conversation. It's, it's bar talk conversation. So, you know, people are going to want to stay abreast to, you know, what's the latest podcast just so they can be sociable with their friend group. You know, if their friend group watches a certain show, they're going to watch that show. You know what I'm saying? But people are going to gravitate to where the good content is. And anybody who's not selecting people just based off of celebrities, definitely black folks. Black folks will cancel your show in one season with a tweet. It'll take one day 
for the white producers at Netflix to realize this show is a dud off of uh off of black Twitter. Good times not gonna do too well. As we saw from the response from Black Twitter. So no, I don't I think everybody is safe. If you want to create content, go create content. The celebs can't can't compete with us. They they can't because they're just low. Yeah, I don't like I don't like I don't think I any celeb. The only really listen I listen to nerds. Uh I listen to uh no agenda. I mean, that guy was on MTV. One bull was on MTV, but that was like decades ago. I will I don't think you consider him, you know, a celeb or shit. You know, um no. You know, I, I, I think if you want real takes, you gotta go with the like the non celebs. You're not gonna get some real fucking good shit from celebrity podcasts. Right. Like people that idol worship, yeah, you, they'll um, they want to get every nook and cranny from whatever celeb they follow and shit. But uh, you know, I can't. There's not too many I listen to, man. I, I'll watch a clip on on Twitter or something like a Draymond and these basketball takes. But you know, um, they're not gonna do Kai Sinat numbers. No, streamers are the new celebs. Kids don't give a fuck about the basketball players unless they play basketball. Right. They don't care about the football player unless they play football. You know what I'm saying? Um, this new generation of kids don't really respect celebrity like that. To them, celebrity is the streamers. And the pod and the um no, not even a podcast, it's just the straight up streamers. That's who the kids fuck with. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll see if they like graduate. Whereas they get older, do they graduate to something else? But they definitely are on streamers. I mean, yeah. Yo, back to that good time. You mentioned good times. I feel like we gotta put that on. On we gotta document this, man. What's that? <laughs> you gotta play. You gotta at least play one of the trailers. Man. <laughs> Listen, it's not a report. Good times. A it was in the. I'm gonna say 70s. It's a black uh show that was highly regarded in the 70s, early 70s, 80s, right? Um killed a black man <laughs> had Jimmy Walker, Otis, what was his name? Otis uh I don't know, this was your generation. This was peak black black television. John Amos. John Amos. Uh Jimmy Walker. Yeah. Esther Roll. Ralph Carter. Uh, who is this? Bernadette. Stannis. Janet Dubois. Johnny Brown. Janet Jackson. Ben Powers. Chip Fields. Theodore Wilson. Your boy JJ smashing your homegirl. Who? Oh. You don't know who JJ smashing? No. Come on, you lying to me. Oh, is that the same JJ? Yes, nigga. <laughs> oh, that is him. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yo, I never put that together. For real? <laughs> That's Kamala man's, right? Kamala? It's not Kamala was dating them. No, come on, Wait, man. Who was dating him? Ann Coulter. Ann Coulter. I'm sorry, Ann Coulter. <laughs> I knew it was one of these political motherfuckers. Right, 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 right. Yes. Yes. Oh, shit. Yo, wow. That's JJ from Good Times. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, you got to put the clip in there so I can, I can watch it. I didn't I see it. I it to you. Oh, okay. Damn, Ann Coulter was smashing JJ, or JJ was smashing Ann Coulter. I think he still is, man. They date off and on. Every once in a while, he pop up with her. What? Yeah. We like that skinny butcher. Yeah. <laughs> there they go. You right. There go Ann. Ann love herself some chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> 
He <laughs> said, how did he even hook up? How the hell have I know? He hooked up at CPAC. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Damn. You think Ann Coulter got some good pussy? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Oh, let's go to the trailer, yo. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, oh. damn, my thing. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Whenever you're ready. He said, Dino White. <laughs> <laughs> yo, stop it. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yeah. All right, hold on, let's put this on the screen. This is crazy. All right, three, two, one. I have important news. Let me guess. The state called, and they want to cut you a disability check for your face. Hold up. You can get paid for that? This is from a fool who stares at his orange juice every morning. It says concentrate on the box. <laughs> who the dummy now? Shit. Me for not wearing a condom. Woo! Shadows fall over my heart. It all started with my grandfather, James Evans. My job as the man of this house is to take care of this family no matter what. I just want to let you know I'm going to take good care of Gray. <laughs> uh, who is this <laughs> I'm about to kill? Juan, my boyfriend. Daddy, let him go. Baby, you should come with me. Junior's repeating the 10th grade for the third time. Is there anything you can suggest to help him get to the drive through <laughs> Can you do OnlyFans? <laughs> take off your shoes. Let me see what kind of feet you're working with. To the dark side. Dear Black Heavenly Father, College Redeemer, uh, if you could just help us. Son, it's for you. New phone, who this? Black everything. At least they ain't got that drug dealing baby under my roof no more. Hmm, man, my mouth ready for some milk right now. Dalvin, why are you so breast obsessed? It's childish, man. Bruh, I'm a baby. I can't get no more childish than that. In a nocturnal state of mind. Your neighborhood is a real shithole. It's the system. They put the guns and drugs on the streets. This, black, black this is getting dangerous. I won't just sit back and let you put yourself in harm's way. I love you too very much. Everything, everything black. The revolution will not be televised. Come on, Rosa Paws. Can't you just enjoy this? Just as good as the Evans of old. Isn't that just dynamite? But the truth is, we're the Evans of new. It sure look like money. What about the struggle? We're black. It'll be here tomorrow. Everything black. Black 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 black. Wait a minute. The baby? Little baby? And baby baby? Too many babies around this crib. It's worse than I imagined. Is this not Coonan? Is this not 2024, 21st century Coonan? I don't know. How can I be a Coonan? I couldn't do that shit. If they told me to read them, I'm like, no, nah, come on, man. Y'all got to stop, man. Like, like, come on, man. Real? Could you read those lines of, like for a check? I'm like, no, I can't do this, man. I'm I mean, sorry. I, I, I got integrity, man. I can't do this shit, I, man. I could have did this shit. Yeah, we know, because you cool of the year, goddamn it. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it. I'm telling you straight up, man. I'd have told niggas I'm cooning, though. I would have no, been like, can't. listen, man, I apologize in advance. I just did some real cool shit, but they cut me seven figures. <laughs> I needed that check. But this set in the black community back at least, at least 30 years. I can't hold you. I couldn't do it. I'm dead ass. This is crazy. I'm going to cuss. I'm going to cuss Steph Curry out for letting him put his name on it. I'll, I'll be pissed off. <laughs> I'll be yo. <laughs> I'm ready to boo this nigga. I want to go to Gold State Gate so I can boo this nigga. They put his name first and shit. What a dickhead. <laughs> they let him do him like you see, that. You see how they did that? <laughs> that curry name right up top. <laughs> hey, when shit hit the fan, you know you got to take the fall for this, right? 
Imagine you go in the locker room, you see this nigga after the, you watch the damn trailer. I'd have to say something to Steph. I'd be like, yo, Steph, yo, did you, did you watch this before you put your name on it? Did you know what was about to? He can't have watched it. You think he watched it? Come on, man. I'm a brand. I'm Steph Curry. I'm a brand. I'm supposed to be like Mr. Clean American and shit. I'm like, yo, hey, Steph, we got an idea for it. We're going to remake Good Times into like the, in today's era. Can we put your name on it, man? We give you 5%. All right, bet. All right, you don't have to worry. You don't have to look at it. I'm, not, I'm like, no, nah, I got to watch this shit first. Now, nah, let yeah. me see it first. Yeah, I got to see it. He's like, nah, man, fuck it. Let's go, man. If he watched that shit, he definitely a coon. They got little black babies dealing dope. Did you see the scene where they had the gun shooting from one building to the next? Yo, this is a red white. The red white's going to enjoy this show. Hey, like, look at this DEI film. I don't know who's enjoying this shit, but Nick, I've seen niggas, niggas wanted to make a, 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 a they want to make a petition. To stop it? Stop this from coming out. I'm about to start one myself. <laughs> I bullshit you not. Hold on, let me Google to see if there's somebody made that shit, man. Because I've seen a lot of people say, you started, I'm signing it. Mm. This shit is crazy, bro. And the thing is, I played half the trailer before. Today is the first time I saw the. Right now is the first time I saw the whole trailer. And that shit is worse than I thought it would. Yeah, change.org. Stop the. <laughs> oh, there's only six signatures. <laughs> Stop the Good Times reboot. Sign the petition. <laughs> <laughs> Change.org. Oh, I'm sharing this shit, man. Come on, we gotta get this popping, man. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. How you share this shit? It says here the Good Times reboot is a disrespectful description of black people. The narrative will only be used for anti black propaganda. Netflix has a history of showing depictions of black folks being degenerate. The authors, creators, and producers are not black. Well, I don't know, Steph is in there. And are uh, believed to put this disrespect out intentionally. I need a better write up than that. I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to complete this. Hold on, let's see how ChatGPT completes this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, um, and I know I know ChatGPT's woke, so it's definitely gonna finish. This. Um. Let's see. Um. Let's see how. Yeah, it just does a chat. It just does chat. Oh, there's a couple of them. There's at least two. One one has sixty five signatures. Yeah. I'm about to start a GoFundMe. What? Stop it or to do a proper reboot? Trying to grift, nigga. Pay me to help stop this shit. <laughs> <laughs> the reboot includes a crack dealing infant, hypersexualized women, rampant alcohol use, poverty, and ignorance. This is not only a gross misrepresentation, but also oversimplification of black experiences in its entirety. It is a service to our cherished Evans family who struggled against all odds to escape their circumstances. See, they tried this. They they tried this like niggas got money. Like, don't let these niggas uh, fool you. Like these niggas online, they got fucking bread. You know what I mean? They're not broke like. Niggas was broke in the 70s and 80s, right? Right. These niggas getting BBLs. They going on vacation. Niggas got money in their pocket. They don't want to see this shit. Like these college ed educated Negroes, they don't want to see this, this buffoonery. 
They don't want to see it. They're embarrassed by it. Right. If y'all was embarrassed, niggas was embarrassed by chitlins. They're embarrassed by the good time. Yeah. They're embarrassed by this shit. Crazy. This shit was. This is. This is bad. This is pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> this is bad. This is like. Uh, it's like Chappelle show, but cartoon form. But worse. Um. Oh. Uh, like Steph didn't grow up like that. No, Steph. I think didn't. it was the NBA. Fucking grew up in the NBA. His dad was an NBA player. Your dad was an NBA player. Hey. <laughs> They got the. They said to a a child in third grade, if you want to open up an OnlyFans, that's concerning. That's why the site said that shit. Yeah, that was her I'm line. Three. They the coons, man. Like I, I know. Like I can't do it. I couldn't do it. Man. I. That's why I know I'm a real nigga, because I knew I couldn't do nothing shit like that. That's how I know. Black, hold on. This is a sick Negro. That's what they are. I'm just a black man from Exton, Pennsylvania. Exton, Pennsylvania. Why has a nigga got Exton, Pennsylvania? Got one on one. Keep it real. These niggas go go to Hollywood, lose their fucking mind, <laughs> start tap dancing and shit. Steph Curry don't even read what did they, where they putting his name. Yo, locker room got to be cussing Steph out. Man. I got swear. to. <laughs> That's why uh, Draymond pulled out the game the other night. He was pissed off from that damn trailer. That's why he got kicked out. Man, that's fucking crazy. Um, How do you think it's going to do? You think it's going to work? No. And it's not going to. Don't even look funny. Niggas don't even watch that shit no more. Niggas watch anime. Niggas watch, watch Chinese niggas. <laughs> you, know, you think you think these these Zoomer blacks is gonna watch black anime about being pole? Mm. These niggas watch One Punch Man and fucking Naruto and all that other shit. They is not watching a reboot of the Evans family. Good time. They lost it. Like, like the only way this was going to work is like if you do it like you almost had to do the same, the same family. You know, what I mean, mature. And I don't think you could do like. I guess you would have to upgrade it to today's world, but um, there's no way you can make you can't make that as like slapstick. Join this is like the Zoomers still aren't going to watch this shit, man. Zoomers watch China, Asian shit. Now, uh. I gotta be fair. What? The original good times. Could you do the original good times? In the se like depicted in the seventies or, or depicted now? No, the original. Could you take the script from the original good times and do it today? Yeah. I don't know. That's some good shit, man. All right, pull this up and tell me. What are you, what are you putting up there? We're going to go to the original. And you tell me if you see any red flags with the original. What I got to do. Let me know when you're ready. We're going to play the original. The original good songs. All right, go ahead. Go All ahead. Right, hold on. Let me bring this up. All right, you ready? Yeah. All right, three, two, one. What I got to do, at least give me a chance to explain why I'm doing it. You see these hands, son? What do they mean to you? They're the ones that's going to hit me. No, I mean these calluses, Michael. Son, that's why I want you to finish school, so your hands don't never have to look like this. That's why I don't take no excuses when you mess up in school. I'd rather you be hurt a little bit now than hurt for the rest of your life. You understand me? Now, what the hell is your big hurry? One of my heroes, Christmas Addicts, wasn't afraid when his turn came. Now, who was Crispus Attucks? He was a black man. He was the first man to die in the Revolutionary War. One of us fought in the Revolutionary War? More than one. There was Peter Salem. He was the hero at Bunker Hill. Well, I'll be damned. But the school don't teach.
teach you about that, and they also don't teach you about Dr. Daniel Hale Williams. He did the first open heart surgery in this country. All about Pedro Alonzo Nino, who's. Oh, now wait a minute now. <laughs> Pedro Alonzo Nino couldn't be no brother. Well, he was. He sailed with the line. He did the rowing, didn't he? He was a navigator. You know what, son? Next Columbus Day, I'm taking off from work. Now, oh, <laughs> is that not Coonan? <laughs> I gotta ask. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Was it Coonan? The oh, one of us was in the revolution. They went. I mean, you, they're gonna take that as Coonan. No, okay, whatever. Huh? They're gonna take that part I as. I don't know nothing, son. I was just I mean, your dumbass daddy. Massa wouldn't let me read no book. That's why you got like, see, this is my problem with black people. This is my problem. With black people. I mean, some, some families, it was like that. Not everybody family had like a smart dad or your parents are smart. Sometimes you smarter than your parents and shit like that. Like, or one of them or both of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't take that as like a depiction of every black family. You know what I'm saying? What about the fact that he said he didn't want his son getting his hands with calluses on him? Is that not denigration of blue collar work? That should look like propaganda to me. Son, you I know. want you to go work in the office. Don't work with your hands. That's that boule babble. That's not like boule babble. That's no, like boule that's, that's only only you boule niggas would say some shit like that. He oh, basically yeah. saying he wants him his son to be better than him. That's all he's saying. He don't. Yeah. You, you don't want that shit was propaganda. I know what the underlying message oh. was. You Chad, you don't hear this first up now. Wasn't there? Oh my god, three hundred episodes I had to put up with this bullshit, man. He's not trying to mean that shit. That is not. Uh, that is not like like I don't remember Evans having a trade trade. He was just going from job to job. I know you're doing. He had to do whatever he had to do to get put food on the table. I know you used to come home from school every day and watch this, so it means a lot to you. No, no. Listen, he told them. I was like, listen, I'm tired of being broke all the time. I'm tired of being broke. We got. We're gonna get our shit together. Oh really, uh, Mr. Amos? Okay. Call Zay. Yeah, he's dead. he's dead next season, man. Don't come bring him back. <laughs> what is you talking about? He tried to see, he tried to fix it. He told them folks like, man, I don't want to fucking be. We gotta stop being broke. All this fucking buffoonery and shit. He told them. They wrote him off the fucking show. So what you're saying is he realized he was cooning and said, hey, y'all, we got to stop cooning. He realized like he didn't want to like, be broke all the time. They wanted to like actually make it. So he realized he was cooning. <laughs> Why do I always got to be up here, be broke and po? <laughs> Why can't we make some money? He realized he was cooning. They said, nigga, we wrote this script for a coon. Now, if either you're going to coon or you're going to die, which one is going to be? And they wrote that nigga right out the show, kept on cooning. So he knew they was cooning. I know they cooning. Now, you going to sit up here in 2024, flashback, and look at that and tell me you don't know they cooning? Oh, really, son? I didn't know they had <laughs> black folk back then in the war. <laughs> Really? <laughs> I'm telling you right now, if we go back and watch Good Times, what's the other one? Um, The Jeffersons, especially the Jeffersons, I know is nonstop cooning the Jeffersons. No. I know it is. No. Absolutely. Not the Jeffersons. Definitely the Jeffersons. No, not the Jeffersons. Come no. on. No way. 
especially the Jeffersons. I don't remember too many episodes because I was a kid then. And I ain't seen a, Je- a Jefferson's episode in that. Where's like where's uh um Jabari? Jabari, there was no like Stanford listen. Stanford and was Son, no they was clue. definitely cooning. Huh? Stanford and Son, maybe you could say there might have been a little cooning, but the Jefferson, there was a real nigga shit on the Jefferson. I ain't saying they didn't have real nigga shit. They always try to balance it out somewhat. They throw you some real nigga shit just so it's not a hundred percent cooning. But it was, I'm sure if we played the Jeffersons, it was some cooning going on. Benson definitely had some cooning. I remember Benson. Amen. Amen, I think, might not have had cooning. Amen was, was respectable Negroes. It was a lot of respectability politics in Amen. 227? 227 probably got a little bit of cooning in it. Everybody saying not the Jeffersons. I think I think if we were to turn them not shows on today, all of them was cooning. Not the Jeffersons, man. No way. We need a Jeffersons watch party. He was keeping him real, not drawn. He was. I ain't gonna say Jefferson wasn't. I'm not gonna say George Jefferson was not. All I'm saying is he was doing some cooning. I'm sure we're going to watch one episode and there's something in there going to be some contastic shit. I don't know. Like, now I think about it, I don't know about San Francisco. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, I don't know. I don't know. What the, it depends on the definition of Coonan. What, what, what is Coonan? Like, Coonan is... Um, man tan. Remember man tan? No, what the fuck is man tan? Yeah, I'm gonna show you. When I when I show it to you, you'll know what I'm talking about. Hold on. Yeah, you're right. Uh, George, they there was a crossover. George, George, uh, Jefferson and Archie Bunker. Archie Bunker was cooning. Tell me if you don't remember this. Archie Bunker was probably cooning. No, you couldn't be black and get on TV and not coon. It's, you think times have changed? Yeah, hit that link. Uh, you niggas is not allowed to be free. You're not allowed to have no positive images of niggas on TV. I've never seen this. What the fuck is this? You never seen this? No. Oh. This is the, from the Spike Lee movie Bamboozle. Oh, I I don't think I ever watched it. It's it, it's it's a movie about cooning. Tap dancing, um, being Sambo. But it, it, either you was Conan or you was Sambo. That's what was going on back in the day. Oh, like, all right, let's break this down. On Good Times, JJ was Conan. Okay, here, now we're getting somewhere. Mike was the uh, the prodigy, young prodigy black man. Okay. Wilma, I mean, the wife was Conan. Big time cooning. Mm. Super coon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. James was just a hard working black man. Didn't like he might not have been the brightest bulb in the tree, but he he wasn't cooning. No, I think I think he's cooning. The rest of them is Samboing. <laughs> he cooning. The rest of them Samboing. All that. Oh son, I didn't know. Pedro Nino, that's all that's cooning. Maybe he didn't know. It was cooning and Samboan going on in black TV then and now. Oh, ho, ho, ho. no, you're looking at that. You can't look at, we, we, we going on this topic a long time. You can't look at that from a 2024 lens. You have to look at it from my lens. No, you can't. Because listen, like in um was it a soldier story? Right? Which one was that? Wasn't Denzel in the soldier story? Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah a soldier story. What was this? Why what movie was this? 
Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. This is classic. This is classic. Right? Yeah. Robert Townsend. I know there's a scene. Remember, there's a scene in Robert Townsend was in there. It was like, yo. Look, they gonna they gonna let us fight the Nazis. We can get the we can go fight Adolf and shit. <laughs> right? <laughs> In 2024, like these black men were excited. They can, they like the white man didn't let them fight the Nazis. But now all of a sudden, hey, you, you Negroes, go out the front lines, go and shoot them Nazis. They got excited. We get to kill some Nazis. In my 2024 vision, that's cooning. Yes. But back then, that that's how it was. But hindsight is 2020. Oh, no. <laughs> Hindsight is tw- that's why you have to look at it from the lens of today. <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna look at all your old actors and be like, damn, you's a coon. Now, no, but now, that's how we- black people were. That's how they had to be in Hollywood. No, that's how black people were, period. Like they were acting that, but black people were really like, yeah, we get to go, let's let's go. Come on, white man. Let, let us fight the white. Let's let us fight the Nazis. That's, that's how niggas true. were. That's not how niggas were. Yes, they were. No, that's NAACP Negroes. Real Negroes wasn't trying oh, to fight oh, no oh, one. Yeah, man. How did the niggas get? Uh, why niggas sign up then? Niggas signed up because they ain't had shit else to do, and they was giving away the GI Bill. <laughs> because it, and just like the soldier story, there was there was black people like Sarge. Yes, it was coons. <laughs> <laughs> The coon has always existed. Just because the coon was there don't represent black people. Just, for every nigga you had saying he wanted to shoot Adolf, it was a nigga like, Adolf ain't never killed no niggas. You're overestimating. No, you, let's see, the thing is, you're overestimating the niggas that, that thought like that. Did you see the movie Dead Presidents recently? Not for a while. I watched the movie Dead Presidents and, and flashback it it, it 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 put into perspective why some of these young men were trying to escape the street, so they chose to, you know, go fight in the military. But you heard what he said. Ain't no Viet Cong ever called me nigga. You heard what what uh, Muhammad Ali said. Muhammad Ali said, "Ain't no Viet Cong ever called me no nigga." So for every coon you had that wanted to fight man, fight the white man's war, was another nigga that said, "Fuck that! I ain't I ain't shooting nobody." Yeah, but there was five people you say coons to say to the one person that said, man, the Viet the, uh, Viet Cong didn't call me nigga. You trying to say it's it was five, five to one. one. It's five, five to one. one. A five to one in the media. No, it was five to one in real life, man. No, it was not. Oh, fucking God. Now we got to call some old heads. Who's the old heads we got to call? What do you think? We, niggas was coons. Why are we still here if we wasn't coons? When I was in Boy Scouts. Why we still here if we wasn't coons? <laughs> Why we still here? They put him out on the boat with fucking a uh, uh, man and got on the ship and went back home. Nigga didn't go nowhere. Coons. Coons it up. You got to admit that. That's why black people can't admit this shit. Niggas, your ancestors were coons, man. Listen. <laughs> when I was in Boy Scouts, I remember the white man was telling me, now this is the white man now. White man said he put his arm in the car door and had his homie slam it shut just so he won't be sent out to fight the war. Now, if the white man don't want to fight the war, what make you think the black man want to fight the war? Well, there was a lot of people like that. The black man was saying, I'm tired of being the cook. I'm tired of being trapped in the kitchen. I want some more opportunity. I want to learn how to work the radio. I want to fly the planes. That's what the black man was saying. And you know then that's the how we got the saying? Tuskegee Airmen. Black man was saying, Master, you let us go back and kill them Indians and the Buffalo soldiers. Let us go. Let us off the leash again, Master. We kill some Nazis. <laughs> let us go, Master. Let us go. <laughs> this is terrible. We, we, yo, these niggas is coons, man. <laughs> Our ancestors was coons. That's why we still here. A lot of them, yeah. Descended I mean, thank God they was cooning. I mean, to be honest, thank God they was cooning. You know what I mean? That's why you can't. You saying you can't. You shouldn't judge them 
we can't judge them for with our vision about and what they had to do back then to survive. Like that's unfair. It's unfair to them. It's unfair to us. I'm not saying that them niggas wasn't trying to survive. All I'm saying is they was cooning to survive. I mean, they had to do what they had to do. All right. And cooning you was one cooned of them. too. Huh? Nine nines out of ten, you would have cooned too. You would have you coon now. So I, like, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't have been on good times. Come the fuck on us. I wouldn't have been on good times. You just said you'll do the remix. You just said you'll do the remix. You said you wouldn't be on good times. The remix is 10 times worse. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have been on good times. I'd have been with the Nation of Islam if it was back in the day. It'd have been full Ali Shakur out here. Huh? Chat, I can't believe this shit, man. I'm a, I'm a revolutionary. All right. Um, Next up, uh, let's let's get into this Diddy thing, Jay Z thing. Oh, They're calling people start calling for Jay Z's head. A lot of people are saying, "You, Ho, I mean, Nurse said I'm seeing a lot of Black Twitter saying Hove next, and he they need to get Hove next." What's the accession for take one to take out down Hove? Now this is in relation to Diddy. We're still going to talk about Diddy. What's the relation? I tell you this right now, right off the rip. It's not even about Jay. It's about your Jay stands. Your Jay stands have been fucking insufferable, dickheads, fucking outrageous fucking takes. You've been fucking stands beyond comprehension for decades. And people got tired of it. So now they see it. And you know Jay-Z got some sketchy stuff in his past. Like Foxy, Beyonce, him and him and uh Dame was fighting over Aaliyah. And I mean, I'm not gonna say what what was right, what was wrong. But there's some like alleged sketchy shit in his past. So people, so those two combinations means like a lot of people are waiting for his downfall, praying for his downfall. It's not just because of Jay, it's because all you fucking hove stands got on everybody's nerves for 20 fucking years and people can't wait for a payback. Mm. Don't, 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 don't. Great assessment. I have no argument there. People are mad at Jay stands and not Jay. I don't think they'll have, I don't think Jay will be implicated in, you know, cause yeah, I don't think so either. Usually what happens is, um, life works in like opposites, right? Where, you know, the skinny guy is always friends with the fat guy. The pretty girl is always friends with the ugly girl. You know, the coon is always friends with the revolutionary. You know what I mean? So people usually work in opposite. So I know at one point, uh, Jay and Diddy were supposed to be best friends. I think Diddy might be the crazy one and Hove might be the quiet reserve type. Like, you know, yo, like, yo, bro, you bugging. You know what I mean? You wildin'. I ain't gonna say nothing, but you wildin' right now. And I'm sure Jay's probably had to pull Puff out of some precarious situations a few times. Jay always came off as the more mature one out the crew. And I say that because I remember watching the... um Hard Knock Life Tour, I believe it was, and Beans went into the crowd. Do you remember that? Beans went into the crowd, and then Hove had to go into the crowd and go get him. Like, yo, bro, that's not how you're supposed to act, blah, 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 blah. But Hove could have let the nigga Beans go. He could have just let the nigga go. Like, All right, that nigga getting in trouble, that's on him. You know what I'm saying? But he was like, nah, like, he was, like, being responsible. I don't think Jay has anything I don't think Jay's that dumb first of all to um pull off some of the stuff that that Diddy's being accused of um yeah I, I don't think he's that dumb um and um he just doesn't seem like that type of individual to me he seems more like you know if he's gonna do his dirt he's gonna you know you gonna have him with a little bitch, like so. So like I said, Becky with the good hair, right? Like he was fucking with the white girls. You know what I'm saying? Um. So I don't think Jay would be involved in like human trafficking and all that freak off and gay shit. I, that doesn't sound like Hove to me. Uh, I don't think there's anything on Hove here. Uh, a whole lot of other people going implicated, but I don't think it's him. Yeah, I'll never forget. Um. 
I forget what it was, I was watching something. And this is the time that, you know, when Jay and R. Kelly made those two tapes and shit. Yeah. And I'll never forget, like, somebody had called worlds? Yeah, best of both worlds. Somebody had called Hope and said, yo, man, you got to distance yourself away from this guy because they knew R. Kelly, there was some shit coming down with R. Kelly and shit. This was around, I think, around that, uh, when that one videotape dropped or some shit like that yeah. from R. Kelly. And they canceled the uh, tour. Yeah. So he's connected, you know. Um, do they have dirt on Hove? Yeah, but I don't think it's dirt involving him in uh, going to Diddy parties. Like they got some other shit on Hove. Like they imagine, listen, they got shit on everybody. Yeah, like that high. Yeah, you know, But I don't think it's uh, anything to do with uh, P Diddy. See, you know, people talk about the underage shit, right? Like Foxy and all of that stuff, and I'm like, may that may be true, right? Um. I just don't think they're going to get Foxy to testify, right? Like, that's not going to happen, right? You're not going to get Foxy to testify. You're not going to get anybody to testify that any any wrongdoing was done. And that's why I feel like, you know, even if Jay-Z did some shit like that, it wasn't on the level of um, entrapment, right? And, like, you know, all the shit that, that Diddy was doing. Like, yo, I want to watch you bang this other guy. I don't think, I think if Ho wants some pussy, he just wants some pussy. You know what I'm saying? Um... But uh, the shit Puff was doing is like it's super sick. Um, but Hove to me was just always like you know, a hustler, a drug dealer. That that was what I always saw. Puff liked to party. You could even tell. Remember when it was Dame and Memphis Bleak? This the same Rock uh, uh, Rockefeller tour, same tape, and um, they're yelling into the camera, and Jay Z's like. And everybody plays that tape and they like, this is when Jay knew he had enough of Dame. You remember that clip? <laughs> oh. You know, Hope always been on some, I'm ready to go home shit. I'm about my business. I'm about my paper. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I mean, but they've been looking like whoever Hope's handlers are, they've been looking out for him. They they got in him out of, you know, out of Dame and shit like that. Um, yeah. They got so, out that out that um that tour with R. Kelly. That was big deal too, because everybody wanted to buy tickets to that Best of Both Worlds, and they were like, you know, they said that they blamed it on R. Kelly. Right. They say he was going crazy or something. So somebody tried to him the show. Yeah. Or got canceled. But you're right. It was probably host people like, yo, look, we got back. Away. Um. Let me read these couple super chats. Uh, Rumble. Uh, salute H H and B uh, Interstellar Go twenty dollar donation. Uh, Jabari, my comedic homie just told me commission commission calendar month is Pen. I am Hotep. March 9th, April seventh. Goddess of fertility rules the month. Tarot. Uh, Aprikus, uncle. That's what you get for being not guilt, not non guilty with pork. Don't while Ramadan, Hotep and shit. Them intestines be hurting. Last name first gift to one of Hotep uh, Jesus membership. Um, hit that thumbs up, hit that share button. 417 on YouTube, 55 on Rumble. Hit that thumbs up, hit that share button. Let the people know, let the streets know. And Brennick, uh, Jay Z is a real street guy. I don't know many street guys that are okay with messing around with kids and that type of stuff. Yeah. He's not fucking. Did he got the motherfuckers? On camera, they said he got people on camera. He saw fifty. Um, uh, uh, Stevie J challenged fifty to a fight, right? Oh, let's get to that. Let's get to Diddy. Like, it's been news all fucking week, and white folks ran up in Diddy's mansions. Fuck, <laughs> has it? Has he fucking? They ran up in his mansions. They raided his house. I don't know what they took. It's search warrant. They were looking to search. They had search warrants. Some white dude got arrested. They said it was a mover or some shit like that. Plunger or some shit. I forget what they called it. Oh, uh, mule. Mule. Um, They're saying uh, Young Miami. What's her name? Young Miami? Young Miami. She was... 
tricking. <laughs> Who's fucking 50's uh baby's mom? Daphne. She's in the indictment too, I think. 50 said uh, you a street, you a sex worker? I ain't like, know you I'm was going, a sex worker. He said, I'm going to court, man. I'm going to family court Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, like, what the fuck is going on? There's so much fallout from this shit. Um, now I don't think they've dropped any. They came up on any charges. Um, remember we we said, but like, I think uh, Jason, shout out to Jason Rose. He made he put up the clip where I said uh, I called him the Black Epstein. Listen, well, I heard a couple of people that said this though. They said no, they didn't. They didn't. Uh, they didn't raid his house for him. They raided his house to get the evidence that they, that all them videotapes and shit. Word. Word. You know what I mean? And them phones. Yeah. Yeah. So to protect whoever, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. That's what Candace said. Candace said they went in there and raided because um, they're trying to destroy evidence, not get evidence. Why is she coming with her tip takes now? Is she taking our takes again, too? Of course. <laughs> I did see somebody put the koofy on Candace this week. <laughs> <laughs> it was only a matter of time. You can't survive independently without the fucking Hotep Koofy tape. Not possible. You gotta get, you gotta head to that next level after you leave bed. The people want more. We've proven that, that the people want more. So she had to go to that next level. She had to. I'm seeing people saying his son's gonna get charged. Like. Yeah. All you got to do is have knowledge of the crime to be complicit in it. So if your dad texts you and be like, hey, man, watch that bitch while I'm gone. That's it. You're an accomplice. You help human trafficking. Aiden and abetting. What do you think happened with Diddy? He just lost his mind? Like, he got so knee-deep in doing that shit? Like, he, it became... Like normal or some shit. Like I, I don't like. I think sex is a drug, like anything else. And, True. He uh, just got addicted to it. I think he got addicted to it, but I think that when you have that kind of money and power, um, it's like, it's like, all right. For example, when you first smoke weed, right? A couple of hits and you're high. Three years later, you got to smoke the whole blunt. Right. Another year, you know, you need two L's. Then the next year is like you smoking five L's a day with the homies, right? It's the same thing with sex where it's like, all right, this isn't getting me off anymore. What's the next level? Videotape you. Okay, this is not it. Let me videotape you with somebody else. And then, you know, that was great. And he's like, oh, shit. And then it just got worse from there. Yeah, but um, I see a couple of people say that there was there's paperwork that's saying Diddy was uh, a CI. Um, Possible. I can't remember what case. I know uh, academics and, uh, and, and WAC was talking about it. And I've seen a couple other places they're saying he was a confidential informant. Mm. Some people said, um, I think it was Dom Lucre. Dom Lucre said, uh, I don't know how true this is. Let me pull it up here. But he said, um, hold on. Implicated the uh, Warner. Uh, and he going off. He just said everyone talking about Sean Diddy Combs, but they aren't ready. They aren't ready for the Simon Cowell story. Oh shit! Lord have mercy. 
Um. Uh, wait. All right, here we go. Breaking. CEO of Universal Music, Lucian Grange, the most powerful man in music, was named as an accomplice in the Sean Diddy Combs sex trafficking lawsuit for alleged claims aiding and abetting and inducing Buffy to run a sex trafficking ring. So this also could be a situation where the other weirdo powerful motherfuckers are like, hey, Diddy, you had fun last night? Yeah. You know what you should try? Human trafficking. And then, you know, Diddy's like, really? How does that work? And he teaches him, does it? According to what's happening here. But, um, listen, it's my take. Let me, let me get this on the record. Well, we already got some takes on, like, I already got some takes on, on Diddy on the record. Diddy was CIA, right? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> He he got off the a couple of ca- the cases. That's where they had him. You know, did we need we need we need some favors, right? This is how you do it. They probably they probably hooked him up with Epstein. He's like, yo, teach this man to trade, right? Mm. He started doing this shit, and he fucking got hooked. You know what I mean? Now they like either they don't have no longer use for him or this was the use for him. This is the problem with when niggas don't have no foresight. He should have known, like, yo, man, they're gonna get me out of here one of these days. Right? He should have known. Just like in, in fucking uh oh my god. Uh what's the fucking how I not know this fucking movie? The Denzel movie. He won the Oscar. Training Day. Training Day. Lonzo was buddies with the the fucking the heroin tra- trafficker for years. Right. Lonzo needed needed money one day. Hmm. Did him in. Did him in. Covered it up. Sean killed. Somebody was a handler for Sean. Let him run rampant. You see, he was blowing up cars, shooting niggas. They let him get away with this shit until today. See, the problem is this could have been like, nah, we can't, we can't turn him in yet. He's big. We got to, we got to wait. We got to wait for a big moment. Yeah. Now's the time. Yeah. Turn him in. Turn that Sean card, that Sean Combs card in. You know, he got addicted to the fame and all this running and pimping and shit. And he thought he was, this was actual shit. You can't tell me these, the, the FBI, CI didn't know this guy was doing this shit. Hmm. He shook hands with Obama, Hillary, all of them hanging out at the White House. You didn't mean to tell me FBI, CI didn't do their background checks on this nigga. And this has been going on for t- decades. I definitely had a tail in, in, in bad boy records somewhere. This has been going on for decades and, and, and they let it go. They been knew he was shit because he was on their payroll. What did Ye say? Ye say Sean Comb the feds. He been the feds. He been on their payroll. See, a lot of people think when the f- people say feds and CIA that you got to go to CIA school and shit like that. Nah, sometimes they just pluck you from where you at. Facts. You on payroll now, nigga. What they do with the op- oh, you don't want to be on payroll. Well, well, we got some cement shoes for you. Or are you gonna go upstate? Which one is it? Now he lost his. For some reason, he lost his. He's worth more than them going through this right now. Than doing what he was doing. And I still got another take. They're going to take AI. They want, they want AI to take over music. So they want to get these niggas the fuck out of here anyway. Mm, now that's a good ass take. Now that's a good ass take. Get these niggas out the paint. So we can take all their masters. All that good classic music. And have AI redo it. Yeah. Check have AI music. redo it? Have AI make new music? Mm-hmm. We'll need Drake. Get Drake out of here too. Mm-hmm. 
They get Drake. They getting Drake canceled this week. Send send K dot on Drake. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Oh man. Check check your DM. I want to play this video because this is this this leans towards what I think is going on with the Diddy. All right, go ahead. Let me know when you got it. Yeah, I'm ready. All right, hold on. All right. Three, two, one. What they do with the artists is easy. They send the stylist at them first. Yeah, yeah. And if the stylist is like, if the stylist report back and be like, oh, he ready, then they invite you to the party. And that's when they be like, yo, look, you go in here, it's going to be some, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a nigga at the door. Just okay, gonna, now yeah. look, what Alex <laughs> Vegas is doing to you right now, he's giving you the game of how these niggas be getting turned. Out yeah, like, they try to put this tight ass shirt on you. That's what they do. And if you wear the shirt, they like, oh, he ready. He he with it. That's you telling them like, yeah, I'm ready. And then next thing you know, you get invited to the party with the greeting is the man squeezing your Whoa. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's so crazy because I used to, I always tell them, like my cousins would be like, yo, so I'm like, you that guy, like you. I'm like, bro, I don't want it that bad. What they do with the artists is mm. so what I think is the diddler was, um, he was a buck breaking wrangler. <laughs> I think, I think the higher ups, like the cat from universal was like, yo, Diddy, we need you to go round up all these rappers and buck break them. So they always beholden to us. You know, typical Illuminati, Skull and Bones, Illuminati initiation type shit. Get something embarrassing on them, record it. That's why the camera's oh, being recording the shit. Record it. So we always got something on them. So when they try to ask for their masters or get out of contracts or negotiate better deals, we go, you want a better deal or you want us to release this tape? When Puffy bent you over. Which one you want? <laughs> and Puffy had that white man bend you over. Yo, do me a favor. Now, we just heard from the Ali Vegas, right? Yeah. Play this Elliot Ness. Yeah. yeah. All right, hold on. All right, ready? Hold on. Yeah, I'm ready. All right, three, two, one. Mm -hmm. He always respected me as a um, lyricist and as a writer. Mm -hmm. And that's what kept me up there from 2002 to 2009. But did you at least see any parties or been to his parties? The infamous Diddy parties that everybody talks I've about? I've been to the parties, but like I said, I, I, I don't know. They select you. you be, you're, you're selected. Be, be, so, be more descriptive. I'm going to be say. more selective. You yeah. have to fit a, a certain description. Mm -hmm. You have to fit a certain mannerism. For you to be led down that hallway with the door. Whoa, 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 wh
that's that's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. shit, yeah, that's what I'm he talking about. They can see who it is. Who, yeah. who's who? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, I wear my pants off my ass. I wear jerseys. I smoke weed all day. I'm bringing bitches in and out the house. He's not. Ness is not right. the candidate. That's right. That's you right. Right. Ness is not the candidate. Ness is not the candidate. Nah, so let me ask you this. Oh, yeah. Who out the group of that who y'all was with was kind of kind of? I don't know. I, I was paying attention to up. the bitches. Let me... Let me... The you said the same thing about the style. The stylist. That's true. I got a stylist story. Oh, here we go. Jeez. <laughs> have mercy. All of this shit is triggering. My past from in the industry. Oh man, let's look. Hold, hold, chat, chat. Get you, get you, get you, get your, uh, get your henny out. Get your blunts wrap. <laughs> Stop being good, right? Here. Listen, an individual invited me up to BT. Okay, mm -hmm. and I've told a bunch of the stories about this BT experience, but this is one I, I never told before. Um. In hindsight, 2020, I think he was a homosexual because the individual he started his company with, in hindsight, is a homosexual. Um, at least I believe he is. And I'm not going to name drops, but they were cool people. So let's continue. So he says to me, yo, I need help up at BET. You want to roll with me? And um, this is Ali Shakur day. I'm Ali Shakur now where I'm wearing dashikis and shit. So I go up to BET and I never forget this. This was like, it was in hindsight. I see what the fuck was going on. So the first place we stopped inside the BET building was the, um, the stylist room where everybody's doing their hair. So it's free from one Oh six in park. Um, Tigger's there. Um, who the Spanish girl that was this little Spanish girl that took over, uh, one Oh six in park. This is the 106 in Park uh, finale show that I'm I'm there helping out with. And we're running. Um, I can't actually I can't speak on the work that we were doing because it's NDA for one of the celebrities. So anyway, I remember being in the room and I remember Tigger being there and Tigger being like this super big asshole. And I was always thought like Tigger would be cool, but he was like a complete and utter asshole. AJ was a complete and utter asshole. I, it was just really weird to me. But I remember being in the room and knowing that, yo, I'm surrounded by homosexuals. <laughs> like everybody in here is gay. And I felt very uncomfortable. Long story short, I did not get invited to the after party. I didn't get invited to the after party. Um... I remember walking in with the dashiki and one of the stylists looking me up and down and going like making one of the faces like, Ew. like, why are you dressed like that? You know what I'm saying? So right. I think it's true. They bring you around to test you and see, but you know, me nigga, it was all these gay niggas in the room. My arms was closed. I was in the corner of the room like this. <laughs> Waiting for my assignment. Like, I ain't come here for all this gay shit. And I remember realizing the first guy was gay. I'm like, I'm looking at him and he got on this. He's like, he looks straight, but his shit too, too done up. It's just too good. I'm like, oh, this nigga gay. Everybody in that room gay. This was at BET. This shit was crazy. So when I heard the stories, I'm like, oh, shit, these niggas tried to test me. That's what that now I'm hearing it now. I'm like, oh, these niggas tried to. They tried to. Because that's where they took me to the stylist room. Now, I could be fa I could be fabricating this, right? Like, maybe that's not why. Maybe we just had to stop by the stylist room because that's where the talent was that we were working with, because the talent was there that we were working with. But. I remember feeling very uncomfortable. And now I hear the Ali Vegas and the Ness. I'm like, yeah, they took me around the stylus too. But I went home early that night. As soon as that assignment was done, I'm out of here, man. Hell no. 
Subject to change so you, your butt cheeks was clenched up. <laughs> 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 My ass was tight, nigga. <laughs> the party ain't here, nigga. I'll fight when you motherfuckers. Oh my gosh. Um. Yes, I don't know what's going on with it, but that I, like when you play that Ali Vegas, I remember I watched this Elliot Ness video earlier today, and he said the same thing about stylists. I'm like. Wow, that's how they do. <laughs> that's how they do people, man. Like, damn, yeah, that's crazy. Last time like, I went what's... to Fox, they sent me to the makeup room, but I had a woman, so I think I'm good. Yo, what is the chances? Like, that's how. That's how they be scouting, scouting people out and shit, and send them to like, yo, they cool. You know what I mean? Um, but a lot of times, it's like. A lot of people just do it to be doing it just because they want to get in the, behind the room, get in, get to the door behind the room, get to the room yeah. behind the door, you know? So, but then they have something on you. That's that's the whole thing. Um, yeah. But where do you think this ends with Diddy? I, I think we got to cap it off with that. What do you think I, it ends I, with? I, I don't think it ends with Diddy. I, I, it, this is going to be uh, a cascade of people going down with Diddy. I mean, look at this oh. shit. We got 50 fighting Stevie J and, you know, now we got uh, Grange from Universal implicated. This could be, this could be, a, a, you know, you know what this really is? It's a takedown of a sex trafficking ring um, to give people something because they never gave them anything with Epstein. So we might see a whole big ring of people coming down because they never gave us none with Epstein. So they like, let's give them this. And they're going to give them a whole bunch of entertainers. Niggas. Niggas. That's no. fucking unbelievable. Well, they're going to give, they're going to give them this when all the, like, Roxy, not saying, that's who it was. Roxy. Thank you. Not saying that these people aren't important, but like, it's funny, like you said, like they didn't give anybody up with Epstein, but they might be giving some people up with this one. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. They're, these people are just fall. These are fall guys for Epstein. Epstein escaped out the back door. They hit him with the body double. Cut the lights out. Put the uh. The 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 Joker sleeper gas on the on the security guards. We don't know where <laughs> Epstein is. And the people are upset talking about Epstein, Epstein, Epstein. They was like, all right, let's give him Diddy instead. This is the last fault. Yeah, I mean. But I mean, do you think did he gonna do jail time? Or is he gonna commit that? Or is he gonna or is he gonna try to get on the run? Or he might not nothing happen. Might not nothing might happen. You know what I mean? Well, if he was going to be on the run, he'd have been on the run. Right. So the fact that he ain't on the run just shows you that. Here's what I think Diddy's thinking. I believe that Diddy thinks he's destroyed all of the evidence. And that's why he's still here. Because he like, they ain't got shit. Because that's what his attorney said. They don't have shit. So he went through that search and seizure looking for stuff. But Puff had three months leeway time since that whole case with Cassie. So they probably spent the last three months bleach bitting everything and getting new phones and all of that. You know what I mean? So he might believe he's squeaky clean and that could be an ego mistake because the FBI going to find something. The Department of Homeland Security, somebody going to find something. It's going to be a witness taking a stand, something. So... Uh, I think he's just around because he's cocky. He not in the USA? You sure about that? I have heard, heard conflicting things where he's at. Yeah, I've heard conflicting re reports. You know, One minute he's in Miami, next minute yeah. he's not in the USA. Mm. Yeah, he might have cleaned house, but we'll see how it ends up. Um Bankman Freed uh, got sentenced to 25 years this year. I mean, 25 years. This is today. Yeah. For the scandal part, right? SBF. SBF? Yeah, Sam, Sam Bankman, Bankman Freed. Freed yeah. 
Were you surprised he got 25? I was surprised he got 25. He always respected me as a um, lyricist. Why? Just because you get sentenced doesn't mean you're going to do that time. You still got an appeal. See, you got to understand, his parents as attorneys, they know how this thing works. So first you get uh, a soft sentencing, right? Because Ross Albright got a worse sentence than this. Um, Bernie Madoff got worse sentencing than this. So he got, he got, uh, uh, he, he walked away with a, a, a slap on the wrist with 25 years, right? Compared to other cases similar. Um, but the way attorneys work is he going to be home in five. He might do 10. You'd be, I'd be surprised if he does 10. But so first you have to have, see, the thing is, you always try it in the court of public opinion. So the, 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 the public, they're following the case. The crypto community is following the case. And they're saying, ha, 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 ha. He's finally got arrested, right? And this, this is what people are reporting on. But after the sentencing comes the appeal for the sentencing. Right. Right? Which in some cases might be a vacation of the sentencing where they vacate the sentencing for a period of time. And I don't know how this works, but so... They'll have the appeal. Then the appeal comes down and they chop off, you know, let's say 10 to 15 years off of it and say, all right, we're just going to come down to 10. Then everybody's in a tizzy and an uproar. Then five years later, he's walking clean on best behavior when, and does the rest of the five months uh, on parole. Like, let's not act like we black. We know how the system work. And they ain't going to be home in five, yo. He got to do a dot. At least a dot. I, I believe he won't do no more than a dime. I just think five years is enough for people to have amnesia. Bitcoin's gonna uh, be, you know, Bitcoin's gonna be two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Ain't nobody gonna be thinking about SBF. They're gonna be thinking about Bitcoin. So I think it's about, you know, removing people from the memory. Ten it might take ten years to remove this from people's memory. Um, because you know, you always get a new cycle of people in all of these industries, the turnover average turnover rates, like two to three years. That's why I say five years from now, you, you know, but I don't think he's going to do any more than a dime. Yeah. No problem. Um, there was a Moscow terrorist attack this, this week, uh, last week, uh, 140 people dead. Um, crazy rest in peace to all the people that died. You know what I mean? Uh, there was a lot of gruesome videos on on Twitter, and they and Putin and the boys they caught like they allegedly they caught everybody that was that, that was involved, and they had some they <laughs> they had some choice torture method methods right. Yeah, they had uh, one guy they hooked up a battery to his 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 genitals. <laughs> One dude I seen, they cut the bull's ear off and fed it to him. I was like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I don't know. I didn't have a problem with how they they how they tortured and, and interrogated the terrorists. I mean, like what we did in Iraq was like child's play to what you know they, what they was doing, and the, and these guys actually fucking killed like hundred over hundred forty some civilians and stuff. Um, you know, I think Putin's accusing the Ukraine of being behind it. And I don't know, but you know, the U S said it was ISIS <laughs> and that's bad news. Cause I'm like, Oh my God. Cause if it's ISIS, you know what I mean? We <laughs> somehow, some way <laughs> there's some Charlie money behind it. You know what I mean? Right. So, like, like, why is it like, I made this tweet, like how did ISIS attack Russia before they attacked the United States? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you know what? What? What guys is fucking with red dogs? Like, 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 like nobody's ass. Like, this is what I can't. I can't make it. This is why the DI. I mean, I'm trying to get my DEI scholarship. Right? I can't. You know I mean, give me, give me a DEI scholarship and shit. They can't. They look and keep looking at my fucking videos like, no, get this nigga the fuck out. You gonna ask the wrong question the wrong. <laughs> like I just don't get it, man. Don't like that much. It's <laughs> a thinking Negro over here. <laughs> 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 
nigga asking questions and shit. <laughs> we just need these niggas taking orders. This nigga got a brand. <laughs> <laughs> Who brought this nigga here with a brain? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, why is ISIS fucking with Russia? Like, 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 that makes absolutely no sense, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> like, when I saw that story, I was like, I can't even comment on this. That's how, <laughs> that's how ridiculous this story sounds. ISIS attacked Russia? Oh, my fucking God. Am I supposed yeah. to believe that headline? Yeah, that's what they want you to believe. I couldn't believe it myself. I was like, come on, man. I'm like, they gotta do that. They ain't do nothing better than that. That's why I can't respect, like, all jokes aside, like, I can't respect, like, the people in the West. Like, like, stop with this fucking arming fucking jihadis and third world guys and, you know, shady characters. If you don't do some wet work, do it your fucking self. Yeah. Stop, th- stop fucking, um, Proxy. what do you call it? Proxy. Third party hiring or fucking what's the term for proxy, it? proxy, proxy outsourcing. Mercenary. Stop oh. outsourcing your fucking wet work. Yeah, do it your damn self. I got no respect for it, man. Yeah, yeah. They they called up Ben Laden and them. <laughs> Say, yo, we need y'all to pay a visit to Putin. Then Putin grabbed these niggas on their way to Ukraine. Yeah. You know what that says, though? What? Russia was somewhat prepared for this shit. Yeah, because allegedly the U.S. warned them. They said they warned them, and, and Putin said it was blackmail. Mm. Yeah, which is that. true. Right. Like, and I've... <laughs> I'm not going to say which country, but I've seen that, like, over the years, I've seen, like, well, well, if you don't vote this way... Like I seen countries that didn't vote a certain way in the UN, right? Six months later, a terrorist attack. <laughs> There's been a coup. <laughs> There's you a know, color revolution. <laughs> yeah, or a color revolution or anything like that. You know, so that's what Putin looked at. He's like, Oh, this is blackmail. They're trying to blackmail us, like stop us fuck. You better stop fucking with Ukraine or, or there's some wet work gonna happen in your country. That's how Putin said it. Yeah. And that's what happened. So they might have been prepared. They cut them off. You know what I mean? I guess there's only certain ways. And then the, the dummies, they didn't split up. They was all like, I'm not, I'd be damned if I do an operation like, hey, man, let's all get in the car, ride off in a Renault, a Renault, Renault and shit. Let's make it to the border. Like, what kind of fucking shit is that? Nigga, I'll meet you in, in Ukraine, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> y'all go ahead together if y'all want to, nigga. <laughs> What kind of fucking plan is that? Yeah. Let's all jump in a wheel and we go make it to the border. That's all together. That's because Langley trained them niggas to pull the mission off, not to escape. No switching cars. Nothing. Same vehicle they pulled up in, same vehicle they leaving in. <laughs> Le- Langley, Langley knew what they was doing when they left them niggas for dead. That's fucked up. See, that's the thing, man. Don't fuck with Langley. Just like Puffy's finding out now. You fuck with Langley, they go, they eventually, when you're no longer of service, they will leave you for dead. Yep. Yep. And then I've seen people talking about, oh my God, look how disgusting Putin is. And I'm like, yo, they, they're terrorists. Like, what was he supposed to do? Book him a spa appointment? Like, what are we doing here? They wore them niggas the fuck out, man. <laughs> they was really perp walking. Them motherfuckers had them all bent the fuck over and shit. One guy had his ear off. That was crazy. I was like, yo, they beat the shit out of the motherfuckers, man. Mm-hmm. They lucky they alive. Um, all right, big story. The final story, big story, another big story of the week. A Baltimore ship hit the uh what was it? The, uh, what, what was the name of the bridge? Uh, the Baltimore Bridge. No, what was the name of it? Oh, Francis no. Scott Key? Yeah. yeah Francis Scott it, yeah. Key Bridge. Yeah. Tore it down, man. Craziest shit I ever seen. Shout out to Cannon Hotep. Cannon Hotep was on there yesterday. I mean, the day after on the scene. Mm. Showing us live footage. 
And man, the takes have been out fucking rages, right? Um, it like I made a tweet. I was like, they blaming DEI for this yet, and I knew they was going to. <laughs> and fucking not even twenty four hours. The fucking the niggas were still in the water. Bodies were still in the water. They was blaming the DEI. Mayor came out, black man, 39 years old. They slandering this nigga. Why ain't he got a suit on? This nigga, it's fucking one, three o'clock in the fucking morning. Come out of the fucking scene. You want this nigga to put on a suit and shit. <laughs> Then he's so young and shit. Now it's his fault the fucking the the, the ship hit the fucking the bridge. Like this is fucking like I don't know. It's like it's part of it is it you know this is what Twitter has become under Elon. You know you can get the fucking the most nastiest race baiting takes off to get for bait engagement because you're going to get engagement from both sides mm -hmm. the better it all is off is for you yep no um you need to rage why, on one side and the support on the other right and this is why this dei is not dying on twitter like people are going crazy with shit like and i you know i put a fucking uh tweet out there like oh listen my dad came home from Vietnam, North back to North Carolina. You know, he had some training. He was smart, right? He could work with electric, electrical sit, right? Communications. He tried to get a job. You know what they told his black ass? Get the fuck out of here. He couldn't get a job. This nigga drove 400 miles to New York to get a job. For work. You niggas crying because some fucking... DEI hire at Yale University. <laughs> Weren't getting a fucking job no way. Some DEI professor job, some fucking college. You weren't going to school there no way. You weren't sending your kids there no way. This is what you motherfuckers is crying about. Like, let's be for real. Not You're crying right. about jobs you are not even touching, sniffing. Jobs they say they don't want because these are progressive areas. Right. Jobs you don't even want. Right. Or a DEI hire on fucking uh, uh, a Hollywood uh, television or a movie. They turn fucking Cinderella or the fucking mermaid black. You should, you're told us six months ago you ain't watching that bullshit on TV anyway. What is you watching it for? And somebody was like, well, you're trying to say racism, more racism with racism. I'm like, no, I'm trying to say, first of all, Cassius can made it made it clear. Something you got to make the shit happen. We don't control what the elites do. Right. You white folks don't control what the elites do either. Right. As you can see now. So when my dad was like, uh, he couldn't get hired. He had to make shit happen. Sometimes you got to make shit happen. Yeah. Now, if you want those jobs at those colleges or something, you got to make it happen. Or you want to make those TV shows. Make your own TV shows. You don't have to fucking go to Hollywood no more. Mm -hmm. You can make shit go right to YouTube. Find a way. This is so fucking embarrassing. Pull yourself up by the bootstraps. You know what I mean? Like, and then you're going to blame, like, you can't see that. <clears throat> yeah, America is, is falling apart at the scene, right? That's by design, right? And they're giving you a bogeyman to blame, put your blame, right? Y'all can't see that? You think it's niggas' fault? Yeah, uh, like, is nigg oh, niggas is tearing the nation apart? Like, which is it, man? We didn't build a nation, right? We didn't build this country, right? Right? So we can destroy it? Like, Kim, come on, man, stop. You, you got to be, pick one. Turn this elite shit off. That's what I'm begging people to do.
Now you're making this mayor, Baltimore mayor, a goddamn a quote unquote hero. Look mm -hmm. at how they was talking about him. You know he went in the next election after this. Niggas can fucking see for themselves, man. They just made him a, a whole celebrity. Yeah. Like why even like he has nothing. He had absolutely nothing to do with this shit from going down. Nothing. You motherfuckers go. Well, the bridge is state property, so it's not even Baltimore property. So it's not his responsibility. Check your DMs. I want you to read that caption that you see right there. Baltimore's young thug mayor threatens his white constituents. If you're white, you aren't welcome in Baltimore. You niggas don't live in Baltimore that way. Like you dying to get to Baltimore. <laughs> like kill more the fuck on, man. <laughs> I heard Baltimore is nice this time of year. <laughs> <laughs> what the that no one out. ever. <laughs> Shout out to Cannon, but you wasn't living in Baltimore no way. Yeah. If you're white, you aren't welcome in Baltimore. Like kill me the fuck on, man. Now nah, you gotta read the first the first four words. What are the first four words? Baltimore's young thug mayor. <laughs> oh, is that not Grifton? They, they knew what they were doing when they typed thug in it. They were like, we're gonna trigger the black people and Get support from the white identitarian. Dog whistle and word. Let's call him a thug. Hold on. What's this? What's the what's the mayor's name? Brandon Scott. 39 years old. Oh. This shit took me out. They called him the DEI mayor. Hold on, I got another one to show you. Hold on. A graduated St. Mary's College of Maryland. St. Mary's, St. Mary's College is an honors college that claims to offer an experience similar to that of an elite liberal arts college. Yep. Degree in political science. Yep. Hold on, I gotta bring this up. I gotta send this to you. You gotta see. I got another one. Um and you gotta see this one. All right, check this one out. <laughs> Tell me what you think about this caption, huh? It was going all out with this story. Imagine being a mayor of an American city and going on national news after a major catastrophe dressed in a hoodie. DEI collapsed our standards, and now we have politicians who think it's okay to run around in sweats. Nah, but when that Pennsylvania Bull governor was running around in sweatpants, as soon as he started fucking dick eating Bibby and them, y'all was like, oh, he's okay. As soon as he started fucking talking shit about China, oh, oh, he's okay. Who, oh, Fetterman? Y'all stop. Huh? Fetterman? Yeah. Yeah. I talked about that earlier. Yeah. Hey, then. Like, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm just criticizing, man, what, what his policies are, what he's talking about. Like, the dress is either here nor there. I never really criticized, I cared about what Fetterman dressed as, like, whatever, right. like, that wasn't my thing. I'm, I care more about policies. Like, leave all that other shit. Right. Um, but is is DEI the new N word? DEI is the new N word. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why is it the new N word when it's like it's not like it's not solely like. If DEI uh, benefits minorities, right? Let's just say that benefits a certain group of minorities. Okay. Like, what percentage do you think they're black? 
Like, I would think that's like, I would say that's probably the least percentage of, of it is probably black people. Correct. DEI benefits the rainbow and white women. That ain't for black men. That ain't for conservative black women. That is exclusive to progressives. But you can't tell that to a red white. The red whites, they like, get, look at this dirty DEI. <laughs> They are using DEI as a replacement for the N-word. Look at my DEI over here. So DEI is the new N-word for the right. This is the, it's, a, it's a dog whistle for racism. Mm. Or I'd like to say white identitarianism. But in some ways, you can be construed as racist. But black people are not benefiting. From DEI. <clears throat> I don't know. This is. It's gonna get worse. This is shit, this shit really just started. To be honest, it just started. We just got cooking. They got more new n words for us. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, because he said, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Might as well play. Can you play the uh, the Amuse one? Because I think he says, isn't this where he says it's code word or some shit? With, uh, what's her name? With Joy Ann Reed? Yeah. Yeah, let's pull it up. All right. Uh, let me find it. Uh, let me find it. Hold up. I got the. All right, here we go. Um, okay. All right, all right. Check your DM. You see it? Yeah, Ray. Right. <laughs> all right, three, two, one. I know, and we all know, and you know very well, that black men and young black men in particular have been the boogeyman for those who are racist and think that only uh, uh, straight, wealthy white men should have a saying anything. We've been the boogeyman from them since the first day they brought us to this country. And what they mean by DI, in my opinion, is duly elected incumbent. Uh, we know what they want to say, uh, but they don't have the courage to say the N-word. And the fact that I don't uh, believe in their uh, untruthful and wrong ideology, and I am very proud of, proud of my heritage and who I am and where I come from, scares them. Uh, because me being at my position means that their way of thinking, their way of life of being comfortable and suffering and while everyone else suffers is going to be at risk. And they should be afraid because that's my purpose in life. I know, and we all know, and you know. What do you think about his rhetoric there? You agree, disagree? I mean, he's capitalizing off, you know, right. These and if this is the thing, Dave, these right wingers and these these groypers or whatever you want to call them, have just gave MSNBC their whole talking point right here. Word, word. They literally gave them the bait, right? The whole story. The whole story. You, what do you mean? They, they, what do you? What do you think about being called the DEI mayor? It's fucking Baltimore for Christ's sakes. Of course, the shine's going to be mayor. Like, what are they? Th what are they talking about? The last four mayors was was shine. <laughs> like these niggas don't go outside. That's why they don't know anything. My God, damn. Everything black is DEI. It's it's a dog whistle for nigga. But see, they... you can't fly no planes. If you got a job, you was a you didn't earn it. I mean, of course you're gonna take advantage of it, but like the worst, the see the one the thing that offends the boule Negro the most. You call boule Negro nigga. 
You wanted them them dirty niggas all on niggas on the corner. Mm -hmm. That fucking blows they fucking mind. They think, oh, I went to college, I got my degree, I worked hard. You call them a nigga? Yeah. You call them a thug? Mm. Call them a DI man? The bootleg. It lose they fucking shit. Oh, He's filming. Worked his whole life to get away from that. He don't even like being yeah. called nigga by another nigga. <laughs> right? They don't even want you to say the fucking word. They don't want to hear black people say the word. Right. They hate every like you right. They hate that shit. My my um my issue is twofold here. First one is the the thing that you brought. This was a tragic incident of a boat accident that somehow has been turned into the race grift. How do you make that huge leap? <laughs> Cause the nigga had on a hoodie. The first video he had on the um the varsity jacket. But like you said, it was like 1 a.m. in the morning or some shit like that. Like he hopped right out of bed and got right there. So that's the that's the first issue I have. The the fact that they've created a race issue where there was none. The second issue is now you got us up here having to defend these fucking Democrats. Cause we stand on principle over here on hotel. So we going to call this shit a spade a spade, no matter where it land on the board, no matter right. where, how the car going to land on the table, spades a spade. But now you got us out here defending Democrats, which just shows you how out of bounds you are. That the right. hotel's got to fucking defend and fucking. Cause if we will look, go policy by policy. I don't think there's much we agree with this nigga on period. But y'all done went so far left, so far right that we got to fucking defend this nigga. And really it's just a matter of a break in principles. We they went so far right. They ended up on the left. Oh man. Horseshoe theory. That's called horseshoe theory. When you go so far right, you end up on the left. The woke right. That's what <laughs> this is. This is the woke right. And that's why we're having to defend the Democrats because we are we are against that woke shit, that, that progressive shit, that liberal bullshit, that pussy shit, that feminine energy, that woe is me. Complaining about dumb shit. How you complain about dumb shit? You ain't got nothing more important to complain about? Oh, look. The young thugs got on a hoodie. Damn, really? This is the same people that tell you about the Constitution and affirming the rights of the individual. But then they want assimilation. That nigga better put on that suit. He better get up there and talk right. He better look right. He better st sit up straight. You betcha. This is the culture that they're creating. Sickening, bro. It's sickening. Yeah, it's like nobody even took the time to like see what happened in the ship. Uh, I read a couple things. People say it might have been like bad fuel. I read. I read a, a really good post. I didn't. I don't know where I read it up, but it said. Might have been bad fuel called caused the the ship to cut off, the engine to cut off. We try to rectify, it, cut off again, and then it was far too late. Hmm. That's what I've seen. Uh, now, why that bad fuel or whatever happened? I mean, and plus, like I was listening to the to the uh, stream. That's a single failure bridge. Like it doesn't have any redundancies. And they said that there's like, I don't know how many, you see, this went back to, they said there's a certain amount that's still around in the United States, mm. which I'm sure they're going to try to get in the budget, replace those bridges. You know what I'm saying? So like, there was that, but like, it, this was the, like the perfect bridge to hit, you know, and it was, it was, it was like, I was surprised, like it felt like a fucking 
deck of cards, but you know, it was all, you know, that bridge design was it. There's no redundancy. There was no redundancy on that bridge. Mm. Yeah, they ain't expect nobody to run into it. Yeah, I guess that's that to that too. Um, here, check this out. I want to show you the size of the. Did you see the size of the, the boat in comparison to the bridge? Yeah. Somebody posted a really nice angle. I want to. I was gonna show it on the show today, but I didn't get a chance to. Here, I go right here. Um, and I'll send it to you. This one right here. And when you see it, it's like, yeah, that shit definitely took out the motherfucking bridge. I right, just sent it to you. Look how big this boat is compared to the bridge. Like, where was he going? Like, I'm like, like I'm trying to figure out where, where are you going? You're not going out. Like, I don't even know how he could. You can't. Would that would have fit underneath one of the bridges? Under I, the arches? I think so. I, I mean, you can't tell from this photo because, well, you know, took out the bridge. Um, <laughs> that shit look crazy. But that's a big ass boat, and I can yeah. understand why he would it would make a bridge fold like paper. It's a big ass boat, and like you said, it, it it was no reinforcement or nothing like that, no redundancies. Yeah, I mean, like, I I just wish people stopped trying to blame everything. Like everything that goes wrong now has to be DI. DI. Like, like, are we hearing ourselves? And this is like, this is the biggest propaganda job I've ever seen in my life. Oh, man. Thank you. Say it again. This is the biggest propaganda job I've ever seen in my life. Everything wrong that goes wrong now, you're going to blame. First thing y'all going to look at, it used to be a computer. Like, what happened to a good conspiracy theory? Mm. Right? Like, I didn't, we didn't even get that far. Before you would get like, oh, man, it was... It was, uh, we didn't get to ISIS anything, right? <laughs> we get, it was, you know, where we used to go, we used to get, oh, it's a lot Islamic terrorism. We yeah. used to keep it together. That was your first go to, right? Right. No, first go to. It was a sand niggas' fault. <laughs> yeah, it was sick. Now it's just niggas' fault. Now it's niggas' fault. DI. First thing he said, that's the, fr that's the first thing I've seen out of people's mouths. Was it was it a DEI pilot? Was it a DEI captain? <laughs> I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Like, oh, are they being serious? Like, I, I hate saying like this is like that's why I try not to be on Twitter during the day, man. Like, it's a I mess. Beat shit, man. It's just like unless something's happening, man. I'm gonna try to get off there, man. Like, you guys is fucking jokes, man. Like, everybody's fucking. Everybody has a one dimensional grift, right? And like, and there is the race grift. Like, it's cool every once in a while, but is that your whole thing? That's the whole thing now. Elon Bucks. Cheat like, tweets became cheap. What did you say today? Like, uh, people sold their soul for fucking. You Elon Bucks. That's why I said it was a bad idea once he started paying people. A terrible idea. I seen it coming. I was like, oh, this is not going to turn out well. Not going to turn out well. People are just going to lower the fucking content. And, um, you know, I want to come back to something you say. You said, this is the worst propaganda you've seen in a very long time, maybe your whole life. And I'm still over here in shock at what I see on the timeline. Like the man is really good at what he do. Yeah. Th this election season was a layup. And somehow the man was able to take something so simple and bring the race griff back into it. But this time with the right. Yeah, I'm fascinated. I'm at this marvel of propaganda that turned the right into that turned the right into the left. 
it's so fascinating to see because you hear about in history, you hear about the party switch. You know that? The mm -hmm. party switch. And I'm like, yo, we living through that right now. We're, I, some days I wake up, I check the timeline. I'm like, I feel like Rosa Parks. I feel like Martin Luther King Jr. I feel like I wake up and the, and the, and the, and my phone saying to me, nigga, 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 you're not welcome. Whites only. On the timeline. From my fellow associates. Sav, I know Sav. Cute little Asian girl. Thought she was cool. Nigga can't wear a hoodie, Sav. So, like, seeing, and, and I know how this works. Langley put the checks out. Like, we know how this works. It's not like I'm shocked at how Langley was able to pull this off. It's just that how they were able to pull it off so quick and effortlessly at a time where the Democrats had a lost election. At a time where you could have had a massive influx of black people into the Republican Party. And they said, we stopping all that shit. Y'all niggas don't got to be Democrats, but you damn sure not about to be Republicans. <laughs> you will forever be politically homeless. That's what I'm seeing play out. And it's just, it's just fascinating. Like, I'm not even upset. I'm fascinated at how the, the uh, lizard men are able to just coordinate this so quick and easily and people bite and watching people bite like they be arguing with you well you know DEI is bad and I'm like you ain't never seen DEI in your life right yeah DEI. it went from in police shootings four years ago <laughs> they went, right they flipped it they was like oh Imagine the whiteboard. You get in a whiteboard, like, listen, how are we gonna switch this, right? <laughs> in the Langley, in the Langley um, war room, Langley war room got the whiteboard. Listen, we use police shootings. What are we gonna do, Steve? We got the we got the the standard. We got the the commodity, the blacks. How are we gonna use the blacks to swing the election back? How are we gonna do it? We do we go back to police shootings? <laughs> Jimmy in the corner. I got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> DEI. <laughs> we make every we start promoting certain few blacks. Get some get this white this little black lady in Yale. Get her fired for plagiarism. Then have some accidents happen around the country. They'll start blaming the Negroes. I'll blame Jamal. No, blame Jamal. Even though Jamal ain't the one benefiting from DEI, they don't matter. It don't matter. As soon as they see diversity, they think nigger. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what they really be doing. They be on the whiteboard. This is the big boardrooms in Langley, man. Yeah. And we're just being controlled by this thought. Yeah. yeah. Can we please stop it? Yeah. And, and you know, Hotep's done seen everything coming. I ain't see this shit coming. You know, I, 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 here's what we said. We said that in election year, we might get a break, right? This year of um, police shootings, that grift. But we always left on the table to race grift. I'm like, yo, they might throw us in there last second. Right. A dead body here or something. They, they they might figure out a way to... I never thought they would craft this. This is crafty. White man's slick. My dad always said, white man's slick. He's smart. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever say I call that white man a dummy. I swear to God. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> oh, this is amazing work. Can't wait to tell my grandchildren I lived through Jim Crow. <laughs> All right, let me uh let me read the super chats. Uh 
Uh, last name first. Uh, gift of the membership. Back in my day, they ain't call us nigga. They called us DEIs. <laughs> Gas is scan. What the fuck is this? Hotel's been boo booed. <laughs> <laughs> v Trizzle, thanks for a donation. Jason Rue started her. Uh, Savannah started with Palka just in time. Twenty twenty four. It's going to be an earpiece for Biden. The Dems need a way to get those votes. LeBron got the call. Hmm. Yeah, because LeBron got the call. They started showing pictures of him and partying with Diddy on Instagram. I seen it. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. You better do something, Bron. <laughs> Breezy Bird, Bronny James hang out with Sus Alphabet uh, YouTubers. Savannah should focus on protecting Bronny over having a podcast. Is he? <laughs> I thought Bronny was out there pogging heavy, man. He was pogging. I seen his um date in high school. I think he was pogging, if I'm not mistaken. Mo Fact, you might have been right, man. That white man slick, bro. Mo Facts in the chat. You borrowed you to ten. Uh, to, uh, he gifted ten. Mo uh, facts. When you coming back on the show? What you doing tomorrow, yo? You trying to join the Griff Report tomorrow? My bad. Go ahead. Jabari, Jay Z is Stringer Bell. Puff is Avon Barksdale. <laughs> he said what? He he had to watch the wire, man. You ain't watched the wire yet. Man? I missed the wire. When the uh -oh. wire came out, I was going through them, some things. I was living the wire when the wire came out. <laughs> Yo, I swear, you got to at least watch a couple seasons. I'm like, go you got to at least watch. Is it on HBO? Yeah. All right, perfect. Because I love Snowfall. I love gangster drug degenerate. Oh, the like first that. season, the first season is crazy. I'm telling you. First, like, first three seasons is crazy. Um... Jabari Judah, even even the later season, it goes crazy. Uh, Jabari, uh, New York City invented the hip hop police for Bad Boy Records beef with Death Row. Unks right, he's been a fed. They just had to burn that ass up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, true. It did come after the Bad Boy Death Row beef. Yeah. Why did they have to burn the asset? That's what I really want to know. Like that's that they just had to do it for a story because it's I don't know but so it's the way the the story goes is um, Diddy had beef with Diageo. Who's Diageo? So um, hey, I'm gonna show you. So Diageo, um, I worked with them or, or a company that had a deal with them. So uh, give okay. you an idea, Diageo, they're a spirits brand. And they have um, Guinness, Smirnoff, Bailey's, Captain Morgan, Tanga Ray, and um, one of those things was Ciroc. Uh -huh. And um, it's uh, so I'm gonna type in Diddy Sue Diageo. So what people are saying is that you know don't bite the hand that feeds you. And um, apparently Diddy was trying to sue Diageo for a hundred million dollars or something like that. Right. Diageo is that's big, big, big business. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um a uh, hundred million dollars, yeah. Uh, something like that. Uh and uh Diageo was like, Oh word? Oh, oh, you want to take us to court? Oh, we're <laughs> gonna show you a court. <laughs> Let me make a phone call. Right. And you see right here, January sixteenth, twenty twenty four. Diddy dismisses racial discrimination suit against Diageo. So he was like, all right. All right, niggas, y'all won. Y'all got it. it. Says right here, he voluntarily, voluntarily dismisses racial discrimination lawsuit against the liquor giant Diageo. Because um, he accused Diageo of, you know, marginalizing his Ciroc and De Leon, Keeler brand. So some people are speculating that that's why this backlash from Diddy is coming because, you know, he fucked with Fuck with them big dogs. Rose, uncut the keyboard in the background making beef rap this week. You're in trouble, H.A. Yo, Diageo made $23 billion last year. Really? $23 billion in revenue. What do they own? They own, like... Uh, headquartered in London, so you know that's... Oh, that's old money. That's old money. Right here, look at this. Uh, as a legacy uh, of, mer of, um, of the merger, Diageo owned a number of brands, businesses, and assets which were not in the core alcoholic drinks uh, category. 
The company has gradually disposed of these assets to focus on beverages as its core business. This included the sale of the Pillsbury Company, General Mills, and Burger King. Jesus Christ. That's what they got rid of? <laughs> That's what they got rid of. Trying mm -hmm. to focus on... So, so now Diageo got like Jose Cuervo, Don Julio, um, Seagram's, Casamigos, the nigga brands. The nigga brands come out of Diageo sometimes, either Diageo or LVMH. Huh. Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy. Um, I mean, that's possible too. Kettle I mean, one. Definitely. They've got fr big friends in high places. Oh, shit. They have a, I was just about to say this. They have a joint venture with LVMH. They, pr they produce Hennessy. Um, Razine, uh, no, Lisa Jean. DEI didn't earn it. DEI didn't earn it. Yeah, that's the new uh, acronym they're running with. Screen time continuum. I'm behind in viewing, but wanted to point out detail about Good Times trailer. In the scene where God is handing the phone to Jesus, God has the T people flag colors on his nails. Oh, shit. Stop playing. Hold up. The y'all niggas is. Y'all slick. Y'all, he must have watched the video 10 times to catch that shit. Where? I'm about to find it. Um, Jamar, young blood, uh, young thug mayor is an elite griff. FBA hate being called thugs. Yep. Roscoe, don't look into which country that captain was from. I think allegedly he was from, wasn't he from Ukraine or something? I like think that? they say Ukraine, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh -huh. God, do got the trans colors. Jason Rose, they said it's going to take five to 10 years to rebuild a bridge. The Golden Gate Bridge took four years to build. Makes sense on that. Um, I don't know. They got to tear all that stuff down, though, right? I wonder if starting from scratch is probably cleaner than rebuilding. Rebuilding, because you, yeah. like, you're going to build all that shit. You want to take all that shit out. And modernize it. Yeah. No, you know? this, this is a this is a from scratch job. Yeah, I don't know. Um plus they got investigated. It's gonna take a year just for an investigation, I think, right? Yeah. Cause they said I swear I listened to the press conference. They said like twelve to twenty four months for the investigation. So I'm sure that they probably not gonna start building until their investigation is over. Right. Jeez. Like, how much of a fucking financial hurt is going to hurt this city, man? They're going to need um financial aid from the government. They're going to need Biden to cut a check. Um, Nicole Cordia, thanks for being constant uh, 10 years. Salute. Salute. Uh, I think there was a... Uh, wait. Uh, Dizla, uh, remember used to made a song called I Like That, even had a Burger King commercial. He locked himself in the bathroom, poked his own eye out. Just imagine what he went through. Mm. Yeah. Cannon is, um, he down there working on this shit now. What, the bridge? Yeah. Oh, damn, he got paid. He, got... <laughs> he said, he said, Pete Buttigieg is supposed to come there tomorrow. Yeah. He's uh Cannon's at the incident response center, so no show tonight, he says, but he's down there at the bridge now. And he's been there since yesterday. So he getting that OT or something. He he working with Marilyn on the incident response team. That's what's up, man. Yeah. Um, what do you got coming tomorrow? Um what MoFax say? MoFax coming on tomorrow?
HJ was making those Democrat rap songs back when The Wire was out. Oh, <laughs> 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 um, now nah, we back tomorrow, 2 p.m. Same time, same place, you know? That's all I got. All right, man. Take it easy. All right, later. Right, peace. Take the date if you're not fake. HJ got a plate and a hot take. They gon' get you moving right. These goofy types and keep the lungs goofy tight. Look, let's get it lit like a Lucy, right? Show the world what we can build when the crew unite. And why these frauds out finessing your protests? I'm in the gulags playing chess with the hoteps. The hoteps been told you. Don't sweat, bruh. I ain't gonna hold you. Keep receipts for the things that they told you. Ears to the street, they got secrets to go through. The whole tip's being told you. Don't sweat, bro, I ain't gonna hold you. Keep receipts for the things that they told you. Ears to the street, they got secrets to go through. Whole tip and build, y'all know the deal. We go in for real, it ain't got no chill. Teach me how to grip, teach me, teach me how to grip. Teach me how to grip, teach me, teach me how to grip. Whole tip and build, y'all know the deal. We go in for real, it ain't got no chill. Teach me how to grip, teach me, teach me how to grip. Teach me how to grip, teach me, teach me how to grip. Welcome to the fourth annual Grifties and the first ever live Grifty Awards! And now for your hosts, Uncle Hotep and Hotep Jesus! Yo, no George, but I can't even breathe in this joint. <laughs> That's fucked up. He working on that Coon of the Year award. Black people, am I right? We've got some great categories tonight including athlete. We'll say what's up to your dad. Season's COVID-19. Who, who did you want? Hamlin? Hamlin's a sleeper. Hamlin's a sleeper. <laughs> Female, musical, celebrity, people's political grifty, the Hall of Fame, and a surprise category. Y'all see we professional, we got the teleprompter and shit. And of course, the one everyone is waiting for, Grifter of the Year Award. From podcasts to movies. DJ Protocol. Yeah, DJ, that's the time to do it. Uh, this is not a grift. I really think Little Nas X is a gay demon. How dare Unlike you? Unlike most modern award shows, none of these women have penises. Women shouldn't speak anyways. Y'all pick the blackest room for a black. Paint the walls white so I can see y'all next time. All coons look alike to me. Some of you white people, too. Some of y'all look like you came from 8 Mile. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're halfway through, no one's been shot yet. But I'm going to say at the Grifty Awards, there's only one person more arrogant, more self-assured than me, and that's Hotep Jesus. Grifter of the year. Clap it off for old Uncle Hotep. Hopefully my kids will watch this and be inspired and stuff like that. Fuck them kids. <laughs> I'm looking for my wallet. I'm like, oh, thank God he didn't take it. Thank God.